welcome. We are here to do a podcast about our top 10 Sailor Moon episodes. So 30 years ago, this month, last month, Sailor Moon started airing in Japan. It would go on to become one of the most popular, successful, influential uh, intellectual properties of all time. And I am clear and sweet, Kai. I am joined here with my co-host on this podcast, Amanda. Hello. Hello. Kai. We are- Kai yes. and I know each other from previous podcasts. Long history. Yes. Long <laughs> history of going back and forth and arguing about things like this. You can actually find <laughs> more content on the channel of us uh, discussing Sailor Moon, all the ins and outs and everything. Um, very excited to do this. And our, the impetus for this was there was a uh, Vanity Fair article that you retweeted on Twitter. Yes. And you were shit talking R. <laughs> and you were like, I can do a better list on this. And I said, okay, let's make some content. Let's put our money where our mouth is. Right? For what it's worth, I have seen a glance of what your picks were. And your list was also better than the Vanity Fair list. Okay, thank so, you. So yeah. was yours. Like, I, I'm not <laughs> going to lie to you. Okay, we should also <laughs> say that we did this very specifically. We did this scientifically because yes. we're responsible people. But we we did not look at each other's lists. Um, right. And we made sure not to. I didn't really look at the Vanity Fair list when I made it. Um, like I've read it through once, obviously. I, but yeah, I, I, I read it through you know. once, and my takeaway from it was, oh, okay, this person just looked up all the season finales and just put those on this list. <laughs> <You know? laughs> How much of the show did you actually watch? Because uh, there's so many episodes that I would argue are better than most of the season finales. A hundred percent, and I, I yeah. think like. Like I've said for a long time, that Sailor Moon is a is a slice of life show, yes. or in some way, or at heart. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I totally agree. That person we should mention was uh, Wilson Chapman, and I invited them on this podcast, but you know, kind of last didn't expect minute. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't expect yeah. them to come. So no worries, no worries. But we will be sharing their list along with our list as we go down these, um, and we'll also be going in, of course, reverse order. We have a couple of honorable mentions too, so yes. hope we've got most of the good stuff of, uh, about the franchise. Or, well, I let's think, say about I the original anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah not this specific- is specifically about the original anime, right. like which, like you mentioned, is really its best when it's being a slice of life show. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, boo, do we have anything else that we want to account for or say before we get into this? Um. I will say, I guess to, to start off at, that most of my personal top 10 episodes were e- all Ikuhara episodes, which shouldn't be. I know. I, 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 I went through and put like, <laughs> you know, who made them and, and all the yeah. episodes. So, so the, the context for that too, for anybody coming in, if you don't know, if you're a casual Sailor Moon fan, the, the original uh, run of the Sailor Moon anime was adapted from the Naoko Takeuchi manga. And, um, it's not even accurate to really say it was adapted. They yeah, were, I know. It's, they were pitched okay, it's at the same time, you know? <laughs> right. There are, yeah. we'll get to that. There are her, newer points. Her concepts. Yes. Yeah. yeah she did the, <laughs> yeah, she's the original creator and yeah. that's pretty much where it stops for a lot of it. Maybe right. general plot stuff yeah, and, yeah. and characters, but um, no. Yeah. So this is mostly the product of the people working at Toei Animation back in the early 90s. And there's a lot of history behind that. There's a lot of stuff that we'll absolutely get into over the course of this because I wrote a lot of it down. Uh, but yeah, c- consider us mostly talking about, you know, S- Sailor Moon as a media franchise is larger than just this anime nowadays. Right. Uh, but we are specifically talking about the anime that aired 30 years ago today and the people that created it. Yes. All right. That's a All good right. intro- introduction in my book. Uh, I, do you want to start? It. Yeah, yeah sure. Thanks. We could start with episode 10 then. Or our 10th pick. Because or our 10th pick. You're right. Not <laughs> episode, episode 10, 10 is something different. Not episode 10. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I don't the 10th episode, episode 10's on, this on the list. list. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so Vanity Fair's 10th episode was episode 92, which is in Sailor Moon S, where we get Haruka's, uh, basically the introduction to her civilian persona. Right. And it's that whole episode where they think she's a boy the whole episode. And yep. they're they're googling over her 
and making making googie eyes at yeah, Haruka. It's, it's, and then at the very end, she's like, what do you mean? I never said I was a boy. It's like <laughs> yeah, it's that it's classic Saki episode. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which, There's a r- race you know, car thing. Yeah. Yes, the race car. Uh, Monster of the day. Uh, yeah. Arcade day or arcade game. Yeah, they're in the arcade. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, I, I'm a fan of this episode. There's a couple sketchy picks in Vanity Fair's list, but this is not one of them. I'm, no, this is episode's good great. One. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty sure a, this is a Nikuhara episode, isn't it? Yeah, I I tried to mark all of them, but I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, I did I didn't mark I, this I, one whether they were Nikuhara. I, or something. I don't know it. Now, see now, this is going to be a thing where look it up. Uh, I'm going to have to pull up the the, up the episode the, list on Wikipedia. You don't have to include this, but. The episode yeah. list on Wikipedia has a lot of that kind of information on it. Right. I used um, I used Anime News Network has a, has a good list if you just pull up Sailor Moon S. But no, yeah, this episode's a perfect introduction to like, there's so much Haruka and Michidu on this list. And I, I, I specifically even took out one of mine because I was like, there's too much Haruka and Michidu on this list. Like, okay. But even then, it's it's such a great introdu- introduction to the character and sells Haruka so much. Yeah. Not even just not even just seeing it through uh, Minako and Asagi's point of view, but just how how cool she is as a person. Exactly. Uh, uh, like I would I would say like yes, my list also has probably a disproportionate amount of uh, Uranus and Neptune, but there's a reason that they're like the most. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. most cherished and memorable characters on the show. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> because I, they're great. Yes. Uh, so like a lot of the episodes that focus on them are great. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it doesn't, it helps that Sailor Moon's S is by far the best season. Yeah. And um, also that uh, I think a lot of it, when it comes up in the Western fandom nowadays is like, did you know that they were, they were gay back in the nineties? And, it, yeah. and like, yes, of course that's, that's an aspect. Like they're, right uh a lesbian couple but at the same time they're they're both uh astonishing really fully formed characters right that have different viewpoints but are also are together and we'll we shouldn't talk them to death in the first episode we yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like we said there's a lot more to say about that i will say uh before we move on to our picks ikuhara did direct this episode there so, you go there you go keep, the, my, keep it up my in case stupidly should we, <laughs> Should we have a countdown? Memory. Should we have a countdown? Just, just do a do a like a, a running tally, or maybe the viewers at home want to you know take a take a shot every time we say it was directed by oh, either Judy, game. Uh, by either <laughs> by either Kunihiko Ikahara, um, who would later go on to direct things like Revolutionary Girl Utna and Penguin Drum, um, Sarah Zanmai, Sarah yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, and or the uh, other director who is my favorite director, um, the original series director for Sailor Moon, who did a number of these episodes is Junichi Sato. Who, who... I think does not get enough credit for oh, why absolutely Sailor Moon not. is good. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So <laughs> yeah. and, uh, he'll, his name will come up too. But anytime you hear one of those two names, there's also um, we're going to mention a couple other people that I uh, that I put in here, um, um, Igarashi and, and some others. But yeah, the those two names, uh, we're going to wear them out. Yes. Uh, right. I I know that there's a... I don't... If it comes up, if I see a writer or something that did the episode two, I might bring it up also. Just yes. because yeah. I there do were a couple a of episode writers that I really loved also. Yeah. There are a couple yeah. of deep cuts. And we should say up front that like a, making an anime in general is a huge collaborative effort. Yes. And not just responsible, the responsibility yes. of one person. Right. Um, we're mostly mentioning the directors or the uh, because they did the storyboards along with them. And they right. kind of put in the most creativity there, but it's like a total collaborative thing. And we've got character artists and writers and all kinds of uh you know, work all, and especially all different contributors here. The thing is, over a two hundred episode series, you you kind of divide up that work, and you kind of get other people involved too. Yes, you know, it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> you don't have much of a choice. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. Right. Keep so, on keeping on. Shall I do? I guess I'll do my pick for number ten first. Shoot. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. My number ten pick was episode one hundred and forty one, which is. Uh, from Sailor Moon Supers, um, the Storm of Love, Minako's Grand Two Timing Plan, which is the episode where she's dating both Hawkeye and Tiger's Eye at the same time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. And um, 
There was literally no way that a Minako episode would not be getting on this list because they're all amazing. Yes, there and... are and I know I put one uh, yeah. specifically in my list as well. So. Yeah. Um, th- this episode is just great just because, you know, sometimes sometimes I hear from people who maybe haven't obsessively watched the show as much as I have over my entire adult life. Right. Um, sometimes I hear them say, oh, Minako is just Usagi again. And right. like, right. that's just... All you have to do is watch one of her focus episodes yes. to see yes. how that is not the case. Because this is good... something Usagi would never do. Yes, it's Date such, two it's, guys at once. It's such a good take, and yeah. And, 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 and yeah, like it, in this previous episode, right in the Haruka episode, they're kind right. of like together and they're kind of on the same page, and yeah. they, they do have that element of you know being similar. Yeah, they are ways. like best friends because they yes. get along in yes. a lot of ways, yes. but they are not the same character. Yes, at all. exactly. Yeah, and I, you know what, I find the more that I that I rewatch the uh, series is like when I was younger, um, I think I really took to uh sailor jupiter and sailor mars and you know rain right. eh, i mean it was always fine but never my favorite but no, it's like more and more as i've gotten older or and i don't know why it's associated with age but you know it i've appreciated minako more and more and she's steadily become my favorite. yeah minako was not done well in the original first season because she came in so late and like right they didn't really know what to do with her exactly right. yet. Yeah. So I think that can be a, a barrier of entry to the Minako fandom. But the more Minako you consume, the more likely you are to probably fall in love with her. Yeah. She's yeah. so she's so real. She's so honest. And and yeah, this episode in particular, <laughs> the, the gall of her, like the comedy of her just like leaving a movie theater and then going to Hawkeye. Yes. And like like these two guys who are preying on girls the entire season, <laughs> and she's just playing the both of them for everything that she can get out of them. Yes, that yeah. that inversion <laughs> is you know, like makes the episode like just the most oh, chef's kiss. Like yeah, mm, it's, it's so great. good. It's so because funny. they are shitty, and then the, and yeah. then she's being shitty to both them and it's wonderful exactly i love it i love it it it, uh, we should also remind this remind me when we get to the other uh supers episode that i put on the list uh because it definitely contrasts with how they deal with uh each of the the scouts deal with them yes okay would you like to do your i'm moving on i'm moving on yeah go for it my choice number 10 um episode 61 from sailor moon r this is the crying alone in the phone booth episode (laughs) (laughs) this is uh why don't you give a little bit more context to folks yes 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 yes, yes, yes. this is the end after the doom tree arc has come and gone and then um oh no wait this is in the doom tree no, it's no, after. no, it's no, after. no, it's yes, after. It's after. It's after, it's after yeah. right? Yes. And then uh, Usagi goes, and uh, Mamoru, he has, oh, the plot for the season is like he has this premonition that Usagi's going to die if he stays with her, right? Yeah. And then he's like, get away from me. And there's like this whole scene of her going to this apartment, and then, and she's and then like, he's like, she's like, they have, this scene is very drawn out. I know which one you're talking yes. about. Yes. Where, where she's like, she's like, they're just talking, basically. Yes. It's just a scene yes. where they're talking. Yes. And she's like slowly realizing that he's actually seriously breaking up with her. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's like soul crushing too, because it's come off off the bat of um the end of season one, where it's like this miracle romance that changes everything. Yeah. And then and then the whole Doom Tree arc where she's been like trying to convince him to remember their past lives together, and he finally does at the end of the, you know, the Doom Tree arc. And right. then and then it's just like, no, get the fuck away from me. Yeah. And it's just, oh, oh, it's, it's, it's I, soul crushing. I, I, now, I, this is one of those picks where I'm like, good pick for this list. And then when I think about it, I'm like, hate this episode. Don't like it. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. <laughs> you know, I do. Um, and that's just kind of with, for me, like, that's just a me thing. Um, like if if people listening like this episode and think it's you know so heart wrenching and they remember it when they watched it as a kid and it made them cry like that's totally valid I get it um, I just like I'm just like an adult now and it's hard for me now to like yep. kind of separate that yep <laughs> and no, me it's watching a, this I, I, episode now I'm like oh just tell her that you're having premonitions oh, totally. oh totally oh totally and it's also <laughs> yeah. like this crowning moment of stupid for <laughs> yeah. for Mamoru like yeah. like it's it's only to serve the drama of them right, right, breaking right, right, up right, right. Yeah. like of, of course but uh 
But yeah, like, no, there I, is what a classic image of her crying in the phone booth and just having. It's. Like, I don't know that it's like the best emotional manipulation that I've ever seen, but it certainly is like the most. Yeah. Concentrated like. Ah. Yeah. Um, See, now if this had been done in like a more modern subversive way, which I think is how this would be done today, right. where where Manru is like, okay, so we're destined and I forgot about you. That doesn't mean I like you right now. Can you give me some space? Like if yeah. it had been that, I would yeah. probably still love this. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? But I, I think it's you. just the, it's the more childish, like... Oh, he's breaking up with me. He can't tell me the reason why, but we're broken up. So I'm just going to keep trying. I'll yeah. just, you know what I mean? It's yes. kind of, uh, that, that does ruin it a little bit for me in my adult years. But back in the it, day, this yeah. shit was soul crushing. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. sure. You can talk about like uh, unhealthy relationships and like how it would, you know, changing attitudes. And yeah. that's certainly an element of it. Um uh yeah i will i will say though to kind of close this one out this would be the first time we'll speak the name uh ikiko ito uh, who is one of the animation directors in sailor moon and she animated um usagi crying in in the phone booth yeah and you can tell it's that it's her work just because of her 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 uh style of drawing the characters on the show is so distinct yep yeah yep 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 they always give they always give her the crying scenes You'll notice yeah. in this For, list too. You're okay, we were that no spoilers. All the crying scenes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers, but yes, we, there's more yeah. to say about uh, her yeah. animated crying scenes on this list. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. All right, uh, we're going to keep on here, go on to number nine, our picks for the ninth best Sailor Moon episode. The one, the Vanity Fair selected was episode 85. That is the introduction of Black Lady in Sailor Moon R. Yeah. I don't, I don't what, know what how do I feel about, about this Black one. Lady? Yeah, how yeah, do you feel I, about I, Black Lady? Yeah, I... <laughs> I like Black Lady as a concept. I like Black Lady as a, kind of this narrative arc for Chibiusa, who is powerless and small and has to rely on other people. And that being the vector by which she uh, has her character arc for this series or for this um, season of Sailor Moon and learns right. to appreciate it and everything. And it's like, yeah, I, I, the I concept don't is good Lady. and it's there. Yes, you know? yes, yes. Yeah. I like the resolution more too. I, I quite like that. Uh, it, d- it didn't make the list in any way, but her falling down and then, you know, her misremembering um, or her memories oh being okay. corrupted. And, no, that's but... stupid. That's why this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's stupid. What do you why think? This is bad. Come on. Okay. Well, t- I, I, I kind of have a similar uh, stance where Black Lady is like, I, I like the idea of it. Like, I can see what Naoko was going for and what the people doing the show were going for. Like, it makes sense. She feels powerless. She doesn't have her parents around. Um, she's got all these hangups because she hasn't aged in 900 years. Yep. Like, like you know, she has. this is a kid who should have a lot of issues where an, an evil guy who comes along and decides to corrupt her has a lot of things that he can play off of and turn right. her into kind of this monster, kind of. Like, it makes total sense. The issue is for i guess see that's not in this episode like what you were just talking about yeah yeah Yeah. so that's an that's a situation where that stuff kind of ruins it in hindsight like retroactively for me because i know it's not going anywhere yep but like um the whole thing about how oh uh i was just remembering things wrong uh my parents never forgot my birthday <laughs> yeah I, I they were actually had planned a surprise party for me right, and i forgot right. about the surprise party until <laughs> right. right now <laughs> right, i only right. remembered the sad part it's See, like no and then but like also yeah. this is also not really done that great in the manga either because it's ruined by the kissing her dad thing like, <laughs> yeah. it ruins it you know, she, yeah. Naoko goes total like too far with it. She turns, yeah, yeah, she she yeah. veers into what, like persona what's the, dungeon. Yeah, what's the opposite of the know? Oedipus complex or the the gender swap uh, version of the the Oedipus uh, complex? There's a name for it or something. Yeah, I, I don't remember. But yeah. yeah, um, so to your point about like the corrupted memories, I think I think a uh, mind control or memory manipulation is hard in a lot of ways to do yeah. in fiction. Yeah. And the one that always springs to mind is kill a kill, which is like a totally different 
yes. topic and way outside the scope of this. But yeah, it's it, it, I was okay enough with it, I suppose. Um, I will say though that yeah, it does kind of not not function as like an entire backbone for just that being the reasons why. Yeah, um, like like yeah. like even even though I didn't include a lot of our episodes in my list, this is by and far and away not the best episode in Sailor Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. this is one. So that, this, this is the first this one is, where this I'm is like, the thing that should not be on the list. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I would not pick this one. This no. would be like maybe in my top 100 episodes. Yeah, maybe. like in like in the top half of the episodes. Yeah, not, like not solid mid tier. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about the two percent of the best Sailor Moon episodes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or the 05 percent. Yeah. Oh gosh, you're right. See, this is why I'm attorney. I don't do math. <laughs> I can't handle math. We uh, made we made no, no, I said I said we made a I made a math mistake last night telling you when the time was for this podcast and I was like, "Ah, just like Usagi, am I right?" <laughs> yeah. So now we're even. Yeah, you're right. Okay. All math right, is my, not funny. Let's keep on keeping on. No. Uh my see, you know what else isn't funny? Going to the dentist. Okay, I was about to say, <laughs> like, this is a big humor episode that you've picked. I was wondering how you did um, a transition on that one. I, okay, more of my personal bias coming in here. This is another one where I f- honestly feel like if most people were making a, a, like a top 30 list, good chance that this would be in the top 30 of a lot of people's lists. But this is episode 153, from also from Sailor Moon Supers. Um, dentist of Horrors, Paula Paula's House. This is the episode where they get uh, toothaches eating Ikuko's lemon pie. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they have to go to the dentist. And Pala Pala, who is the blue Amazonas quartet member, the best one, the one that everybody yeah, likes. Yeah, she's the, she's the meme one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. She has set up like a season one style fake business. Yeah. Where like <laughs> the monster is a dentist, but then like, when he turns when she turns into a monster she turns into a giant monster tube of toothpaste and then like threatens yeah. them with like a, a tooth driller to drill out their cavities and they get so upset that they do the crying thing from the first episode <laughs> yeah. that's this episode and this episode has great <sighs> mamaru moments too where mamaru is like trying to coach himself into how he's gonna uh, <laughs> talk to Usagi about something they had an argument over earlier. I forgot about so. that. He's giving himself a pep talk. Yeah, I remember. This is a great episode. Uh, and this episode is based on one of the uh, Usagi uh, Chibiusa picture diary side stories from the manga. Further um, proving my eternal thesis <laughs> that Naoko always had the best ideas in Sailor Moon, the person who came up with the show, and that the the as great as, as the 90s anime is, it would have benefited even more from using more of higher ideas instead of just considering them inspiration. Uh, so that, that that's, that's, that's another facet to why I personally love this episode so much, but I also just think this episode is just good. Sure. It's just um, funny. Yeah. It's got a classic crazy sailor moon villain it's got shenanigans it's just great yeah i will agree with that and there's a couple episodes along the way that i i don't think really made my list because you know in any list like this you're going to skew a little bit more towards the dramatic emotional side yeah um but there are there are so a ton of episodes or at least a handful of episodes that are like genuinely great comedy bits and this is certainly one of them yeah and those are like the best moments of supers too. Yeah. So much yeah. of the story episodes in that show are bad. Right. Season right. Are bad. Yeah. So a lot of the best episodes in supers are the ones that are just like this one where it's just cr- zoinks, like craziness. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a fun cartoon. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. Well, my pick was a little bit more emotional and dramatic yes. this time around. I went for my number nine. I went with episode 70. This is the Sailor Moon R uh, first of the Spectre Sisters redemption arcs with Cone, where Cone becomes a makeup salesman and comes to the shrine. Uh, and then she has this whole arc with Ray 
and then she gets betrayed by Crimson Rubius, and she gets all the, yes. the power. And then and she's um, like, "Whatever, I don't care if you kill me, just kill yep, me." And then exactly, so like, no, what's cool? What could be making exactly. her say that? That's so sad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And then Jupiter goes in for a knee to the chest, and and uh, um, Bray jumps in front of it. Sailor Mars jumps in front of it. It's just like ah. Uh, uh, and they and they they actually it, it's uh, a lot of these picks or a lot of what gets to me about Sailor Moon or you know resonates with me about Sailor Moon is the triumph of compassion and understanding and yeah. love and you know all that. And jazz. this is a great episode for that. Oh yeah, it's the yeah. it's the best. It's it's, it's oh, great. It's so clean. Um, this is the first time I'll mention somebody else's name. This is um, directed by and boarded by Kona Kono Us Konosuke. Uda, who uh, did a couple episodes on this, hasn't done a whole lot of anime stuff. But I was looking over the their uh, their um, library, and they did some of my favorite episodes of the recent season of Zombieland Saga. Really? And I was like, "What a wow. crazy thing that twenty years later you would be doing the other show that I that was my anime of the year uh, this past like year, almost thirty years later. Yeah, or, yeah thirty yeah. years. Well, twenty five probably, right? Yeah, yeah something 20, like that. Twenty, yeah. a little over twenty five. Because yeah. this episode came out at the end of ninety five. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, like... the end of ninety three. No, you're right. You're right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Okay. But anyway, regardless, like, why are you still in the industry? Why are you still? Yeah. You know, like that's crazy that you're that you uh, made things that I, I had no idea that you independently loved. Um, or I said that wrong. But yeah. Yeah. You get the idea. It's cool. It's uh, it's I, I love the Spectre Sisters. I'm gonna say it, and I've got more later in the list. But I genuinely like the redemption of the Spectre Sisters in R. Uh, it is definitely one of the highlights of R. R is probably my least favorite season. Um, so I'm sure that influenced my picks on this list personally. But like, if I if you if you made me sit down and watch any episodes about from Sailor Moon R probably going to be the specter sisters episodes because they're good <laughs> yeah yeah yep, yep. okay 100 percent. so number eight on vanity fair's list was uh the season finale for oh no no uh, it's the season. uh well yeah the first part of the season finale yeah part one specifically. of it yes. yeah so so that was an issue that i had putting like choosing between you'll find out later on we can talk about it more Right. Because there is, it is when you look, think, considering these episodes for a list like this, it's like, okay, do I pick the episode where all of the Sailor Senshi die? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or do I pick the episode where uh, that's like the final showdown and right. that, that heartbreaking scene where Sailor Moon has Tuxedo the locket mask. in her hands? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so this is, of course, like this episode is going to be on probably yeah. anybody's the, list you know yeah I, I think it was on all three of our lists i don't yeah. know if you put it but i certainly did i think um, i think this is well like i said i was between those two but i think it was this one if i remember right, yes yes it down, was but, yes yeah yeah, yeah. Um, um yeah it's just great yeah um, no there's no there's nothing bad to say about this episode this is like one of the if you made a list of my top 10 episodes in anime this would probably be one of them yeah exactly like the impact of this episode is just yeah. I mean, and this is the episode that had the the legendary uh, Japanese children being so upset that they went to the hospital rumor. Oh, really? Attached to I've it. never heard, ever that. heard Yeah. No. I don't think that's actually true, but yeah. I've heard it repeated a few times over the years online. I was and, certainly uh, so upset. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's upsetting the first time you watch it. It it's actually is really upsetting. This is, um, uh, this is another... Or this was... Um, First of many that we'll say was boarded by Junichi Sato. And uh, yes. it's just, it's, there are some shots in this episode 45 of Sailor Moon that are just like so eternally beautiful, so ethereally beautiful, so like transcendentally beautiful. Yeah. That it's so, it hits so hard and it's so sad. And it's just like, ah, oh, it's got this, this element of like, glamour to it almost with all the crystals and everything right like it's hauntingly beautiful like yeah against yeah. the backdrop of like that's the backdrop of what is actually happening which is so horrifying yeah uh yeah you know you it's know what my favorite 
you know what my favorite bit of this episode is maybe i should save what? it for the other time oh keep it we'll oh, keep it yeah save it for the, the next one i will mention however this is another crying episode animated by ikuko ito there you go yeah <laughs> <laughs> we, we should also say that uh ikuko ito and junichi sato after sailor moon went on to create princess tutu Right. There's a lot of very pretty crying in that as well. So. Yes. Another good example of her you talents. You see it here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway. So my episode eight was episode 181 from Sailor Stars, which is Seiya and Usagi's heart-pounding date. Uh, probably like the, in my opinion, it's probably the Seiya and Usagi episode. Yes. Um. There might be a couple others that are worth it, that are like of note, but like this episode is why anybody is a fan of this couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they have a they have a couple other moments, but it's really this it's really episode. this it's one, really, yeah. and it's because this episode is so good. Like yeah. this is the first the first time we actually really see them just interacting together by themselves. Yeah. Um, like for a full extended portion of the episode Mm -hmm. and uh you can like they have and the reason i say that this is the reason people care like anybody would care about this couple is because their chemistry in this episode is so good yeah um it is very evocative of usagi and memru's chemistry in the first different but different in a a, a a different way Yeah. yeah um so I don't know. I just think it's great. The whole sequence where they're at the amusement park is adorable yes. and very fun. Um, and you know, this might be the only episode from Stars that I have on this list. No, yeah. I have another one later. I have another one later. I lied. But uh, this is definitely one of my favorites. Yeah, Stars, Stars is yeah. a bit shorter, and it's got a handful of uh, really great stuff. And this this is certainly one of them. And the I want to say that the moment later on that we don't have on this list of um, the crying in the rain and like, am I not good enough from Seiya yeah. to Usagi? It really works because you see this stuff in this episode. Right. You, because you, you kind of get the feeling that he probably is good enough. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. It's like, yeah, they kind of work. Yeah. 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 Um, it's, it's, I mean, that whole, I could talk, I could fill a podcast hour just talking about that crying in the rain episode. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this is this is probably my personal favorite episode. For all you Seiya and Usagi shippers out yes. there, there you go. There uh, you go. <laughs> also, uh, take a shot, Junichi Sato, Junichi Sato episode. Is it Let's really? Go. Yep, <gasps> he did the boards You're for right. it. You're yep, right. There you go. Oh my god, I'm looking at the list right Surprise. now. Yep. He, I can't believe he was still working on the show. Well, yeah, no, he he left in um, Sailor Moon R after the Doom Tree arc to go work on uh, Junkers Come Home, which is uh, uh, you know a questionable decision. But um, he would come in and do episodes. Like everybody else, took over the series directing right. after the first uh, bit in that place in R. But um, he would all uh, come in and do episodes for uh, every now and then. See, yep. he's he's leaving his his yep. mark on the series all the way up to the end. You. That's what yeah. I'm telling you. He's great. All right. Uh, I'm going to hit my number eight right quick. You already know it is the final episode, episode 200, uh, Sailor Galaxia versus Sailor Moon, the final send off of the the franchise or well of this this part of the franchise, I guess <laughs> this yeah. series. Yeah. Um, How could you and- not love it? It's not on my list, it's- but like it's definitely an honorable mention for me. Like it's just great. Yeah, no, it, yeah. It, and I think if you've seen it, you are, you know what's great about it and, yeah. and everything there. The, the like, sword breaking, her diving out, her reaching out her hand, the the music in the background. It's like this big climax thing. And um, you see Galaxia before she was, uh, you know, in, in her, like, purified form. And it's, it's like this big send off. And then you've got the 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 falling action afterwards is great, too. The last yeah. shot of the of the series is the... Um, Mamoru and Usagi kissing under the moon is uh, yeah it's it was, it's a plays. really good final episode yes for this show yeah. specifically yep um, I, I, I think I do go oh, ahead. sorry go ahead I, I just want to say that like again mo- most of my moments are going to be redemption episodes right and this is this is how I feel this show should resolve yes um, you know yeah yeah uh it, it it's that's such a consistent theme in the 90s anime that like 
And that's that's always been the highs of Sailor Moon. The highest highs are the those episodes where, you know, it makes you feel good afterwards when you watch it. So yep. it, it's definitely definitely was wise to end the series on that kind of note and do it in such a great way. Um, yep. th- that being said, what I was about to say was that this is another one of the situations where when I personally look at this episode in retrospect, it is ruined a little bit by issues I have with episodes surrounding it. Okay. Um, I thought you were going to say because it's different from the manga ending with Sailor Oh, Cosmos no. Well, no. Stars is so different. Like, Stars yeah, is so yeah. wildly different from the manga Stars that it's not even really comparable at that point. Right. Um, but, like, what I, as much as I love this episode and another episode towards the end of Stars that's that we'll talk about later, it is marred a little bit by the simple fact that, like, if you go back and rewatch these, it's like a, it's like, there's like a span of six episodes or so that compromise like the actual finale yeah. that have like two and a half episodes worth of content. Yes. In them. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we recently did a rewatch of stars. Yes. With yeah. some of my friends and uh, there, uh, yeah, uh, stars like, is, is lacking on. Like, I forget which content. episode, I forget which episode it is, but one of these final five episodes is just a whole episode where like nothing happens. Yeah. Where, no, where you're right. You're totally right. The whole episode yeah. of Usagi getting blasted and being hurt and then slowly getting up yeah. again. And they get <laughs> yeah. blasted and getting hurt. There's like a whole episode in here somewhere. Yeah. I forget and which it, one. And it's like there there is that one good moment where the Sailor Stars like believe in yeah. Usagi or yeah, like yeah, yeah. or change, but it's just protracted across like yes. you say like it's three like episodes. So yes. much. Yeah. <laughs> it's like way, so it's, way it's it's one of those situations where it's a little bit hard for me to to divorce that issue. Sure. from this episode but that's not i can recognize well, I that's mean, not fair and this is yeah still i was totally, about to say like if you wanted totally to a deserves bottom, to be here a bottom 10 episodes list we can <laughs> we can put yeah. that episode <laughs> yeah. on there yeah, yeah exactly be, yeah. yeah which would be fun honestly that would be just as much fun oh as because there's yes. there's some stinkers you know oh, like not every episode so is a winner bad episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know what, yeah do? better to talk about the good things yes all right uh vanity fair's seventh pick this was another questionable one for me. This like, one is I, very weird. Okay, good. I'm glad you're on this on board with this one. It is episode 51. That is the Sailor Moon R episode, early in Sailor Moon R, where Usagi gets the power up. This is where they go um, uh, viewing the Sakura trees blooming, and they have a picnic, and there's. Um, this really creepy monster of the day that comes yeah, out. Yeah, a very the monster is legitimately creepy. Yeah, yeah, and it slams him against the tree, and then and then like Usagi has to descend into her. I don't know wherever she goes. Her and, and psyche. Then, yeah, the, and then there's yeah. what? What is it? Her mom is, is down there, or is it a representation of me or Princess Serenity? I don't even know. But it gives him the rod, and then and then I don't. I mean, they're like it's not a bad episode. Like it is a good right. episode. It just is not at all with the first any like anywhere close to the first episode that would come to mind for me. Yeah, it's like top sixty yeah, or yeah. fifty. I'm yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Um. I I don't know what else to say about this episode. I, I wish. I know I wish it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to talk about because it's so like. It's a it's, standard like power up episode yeah, of like yeah. plot. Like, why would you choose the? I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe the only thing I can think of is that maybe it's the combination of like the creepy monster. With like her being kind of powerless. Yeah, yeah, it does know? have that aspect of it. Yeah. That's probably the only novel thing about it. Uh, there's yeah. some good stuff from the characters interacting, I guess. The, uh, yeah, the it ha- it has a cute uh, uh, blossom viewing picnic scene. Yeah, Miss Haruna's there, right? Yeah, am I remembering that? Yeah, I think so. I think so too. Naru's there, so yes, we know good. Naru's there. This, <laughs> it's Naru it's is still sad that she died after Sailor Moon. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, like Naru. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, who she'll have her do on this list. Uh, I mean, I think we can agree that my number seven pick is better than Vanity Fair. Let's go. What did you pick? pick? My number seven pick is episode one. The first episode hey, of the show. Hey, let's go. Um, I honestly think like for a list like this, the first episode would be, probably get overlooked. But... Like, if you sit down and watch the first episode of Sailor Moon, it is perfect. It is, like, a perfect encapsulation of what you are about to watch 
who Usagi is, who Luna is. Yeah. Um, it sets up a bunch of the mysteries of the show, like sure. like almost very immediately. You get this really cool contrast of how fucking horrifying the monster is versus how cute the style monster. and everything else is. Yep. Um, it's just like it's just like a perfect episode of Sailor Moon. Yeah, I, I think you know? the the thing too is the how it manages the tone that there's all yeah. that comedy about Usagi failing the test. There's all that like kind of wistfulness of her looking up at the Sailor uh, V poster for right. the game. Um, I talk a lot about uh, one of my first things that I ever made was a, a an idea of grace versus glamour, the duality of Sailor Moon, and you see it in this first episode that yeah. she wants to be somebody cool and have an adventure and have all these romances and uh, and then she she also is just like a du- a dumb kid <laughs> yeah like i i've i forget who tweeted it but somebody i retweeted something on twitter recently that was like um sailor moon is my favorite anime because it's a story about a slacker who wasn't capable of doing what was was being asked of her but yeah, because exactly. yeah. but because you know she had her friends around her and yep. she was willing to put in the work and she knew what had to be done she yep. kind of rose above who she was and became that kind of a hero exactly. person. And exactly. that is happens in this episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That yeah, is yeah. in this and episode. It, you and know, it's on a creepy, smaller scale. And it's, it's funny. It's yeah. entertaining. And it's like, it sets up all the stuff. Um, so my story about this episode was I was doing my, um, a video about uh, Junichi Sato's work on Neon Genesis Evangelion. And I was reading like a lot of old research about um, people who had worked on Sailor Moon and what they had said. Mm-hmm. And the interview, and this could be apocryphal, look it up. Like the, you'd have to search on Ava Geeks, some old, old threads that I found. Um, but it was them saying somebody who had worked on or was working, maybe it was a writer, maybe it was one of the animators. Like when they got the manga, they were like, I don't, we don't know how to make this into a television show. Nobody, like, <laughs> nobody knows what this should be or how we should go about doing this. And then it's only because uh, this episode, this, of course, was uh, Sato boarding this episode and doing right. it. It's the first episode and he's the series yeah. director. So it's like uh, everything that this 90s anime of Sailor Moon came to be is the, the DNA is brought to life in this episode in by this episode. how Sato chose to represent it. And right. you can go back to the stuff that they did at Toei before this, the, uh, um, that you, you kind of see the DNA in, and there's a lot, there's like a lot of fun stuff here um, that made its way into Sailor Moon and helped that tone balance out with the kind of the fantastical stuff that uh, uh, Takeuchi brought right. forth. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. The, the, this does he, not get enough respect. What we're trying to say is Sato is the goat. Right. It's and... it's understated too. It's <laughs> yeah, like it's like it understated. Is. And you you wouldn't know to thinking about it, but looking back, like episode one of Sailor Moon is genuinely, genuinely really genius. It really is. It's great. And I think it's we should also mention that like to give Naoko her credit too, but for yeah. for coming up with the underlying, you know, story and concept right. here for this introduction. This is basically the introduction to every mainstream magical girl show since this is aired. <laughs> sure. Okay? Oh, totally. So it's like yeah. Uh, yeah. A little a magic little creature comes to you and tells yeah, you you yeah. gotta go fight a monster. In in form you know? and also in like presentation too. Yeah. Or, yeah. Like, or like feeling or like the type of adventure and scale of adventure that you're going to go on. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Episode one's great. Uh, thank you for putting that on here. Cause you're I wouldn't... very welcome. See, I <laughs> overlooked I it myself. I, you know? Yeah. All right. I'm going. It's okay. Different... You're, you're going to do, you're about to do someone. I'm do dropping right now. I'm dropping the deep agree. lore on you. I'm <laughs> yeah. dropping the deep lore on you. Okay. <laughs> so for Sailor Moon Supers, there are it was basically one hidden episode, which is two half episode length episodes, and it's called the Sailor Moon Supers Special. And uh, the first half of that is a self contained story using only Sailor's Uranus and Neptune, uh, Haruka and Michiru, and it's this short story. It's great. Kind of about like <laughs> or at a party and Haruka's sick and then it mostly fo- focuses on Michiru uh, and uh, <laughs> the plot you, you gotta watch it if you haven't watched it like if you're a Sailor Moon fan if you've gotten this far to listening to us talk about it and you have not seen have this seen episode this? you have to go find beca- it yeah because it's a rare episode like you wouldn't necessarily 
encounter it if you didn't know it existed. Yeah. It's um, on it's on one of the Viz releases for oh, is it? Supers. Yeah, it's is on, it? That's great. It's, it's like a it's like a bonus feature and one of the there's like Supers was cut into two box sets. And it's on yeah. one of those. I forget. Oh, okay, called. okay. That's yeah. I'm glad they put it in there. Yeah. Oh, uh, that means it's dubbed too. Oh snap. Yes, it is. Uh, that. Uh, so anyway, yeah. The 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 plot of this episode just basically boils down to this puppet master guy, and he's like, "Well, oh, but I'll release all the shadows onto the world, and I'll do big, big bad things if you if you break my puppet." And then, uh, but then it's weighed against Haruka. Haruka is like the, uh, it's like the Spider-Man problem, right? Of the, the holding the yeah. thing of innocence in one hand and then the person that you love in the other hand. Right. And like, it's not like, uh, Sailor Neptune even does a Spider-Man type thing. She literally <laughs> just blows up the puppet without even a second thought and, yeah. and saves her lover. And it's like, <laughs> she doesn't even blink. And it's like, it's, it's like the perfect moment for me and why I love, uh, Michiru. There's like, there's like this line afterwards where the guy's like, you would destroy the world to save your friend. And she's like, yeah. And, yeah like, <laughs> like of course like yeah and, and it's such a perfect representation of their relationship yeah you know? yeah uh, more evidence of like they're the most interesting characters in the show and oh, that's totally. why they come up so often in the list oh, totally. like this. it's yeah. so fucking good it's yeah. so oh god um find you somebody who looks at you like uh sailor neptune looks at haruka yeah oh, oh also the other thing i'll say about this episode is that um this scene of Harka hitting on the maid. Uh, there's like this, <laughs> yes. there's like this female maid that's attending to her and Harka starts hitting on her. And then Michiru interrupts. Uh, and uh, I have a cell from this episode of Harka <gasps> wow. hitting on the maid. Oh my uh, yes, God. Yes, I okay. own a cell. And then it, we'll put it, you'll put it in the video here. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, I have to get a, uh, go get yeah. a photo of it. You yeah, got to show it to everybody now. Yeah. No, it, yeah. it's, oh, man, I was, I was, I was buying, I was looking for Sailor Moon cells and I was like, wait, is that the super special? Oh, shit. Shit. I've told you this before, but my one Sailor Moon cell is the angry uh, Yoma from season one where she has snowmans for boobies. Oh, <laughs> yes. So and when she's angry, the snowman's expression changes to the angry face. face. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> from the skiing I episode. It. I love it. I yeah. love it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, okay. Anyway. anyway. On to number six now. Yes. Oh, okay. I should take this one. Sure. Um, okay. Number six, Vanity Fair shows episode 171. This is in the first arc of Sailor Stars. Um, this is the episode where Sailor Jupiter, Jupiter is alone with Usagi. Usagi is brainwashed again. And then uh, <laughs> Makoto is trying very hard to convince Usagi to remember what she's doing to snap out of it to transform and also fight off Nehalani at the same time. Uh, uh like, like this, this pick. is I like this pick too. This is this is like one of a string of episodes that are all just good. Yes, we should you know? we should say so this co coincides with my pick that accidentally accidentally just completely randomly ended up at one so, um at number 6 cuz I picked episode 167 which is the start of this entire arc. Yes. And I know that you also had this as a honorable mention too, yes. right? Yes. I, and it, I put it as an honorable mention because it's like the reverse problem of, oh, that bad episode ruins this episode. Yeah. It's, it's like <laughs> yeah. the reverse of that. It's like all of these are good. So yes. it makes each of the other ones better. Yes. You know? there, there are, it's, it's just uh, – so the, the context for the start of Sailor Stars was that the manga was not finished, right? Right. Um, Ikahara had left after Supers. And then uh, Igarashi was now series director. Igarashi um, would later go on to um, direct things like uh, Star Driver and uh, he's doing B Bungo Stray Dogs now. Yes, which um, is huge among my kind of circle. Is of it? Animation. Is it? Oh, yeah. oh my God, my friend, yeah. my friend's into it. And I was like, man, I watched the first bit of it and uh, okay, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But I know in a certain demographic it hits. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're... Yeah, any, 
yes, you look up Igarashi and and his the writer. The also I forget his name, but the writer that goes along with uh, him, it's, his best friend is like a writer that has done Kenny all of his stuff. Kenny Okay, that is that it? Yeah. Oh no no um, no that no no no. Uh, I thought it was Endo, I isn't it? I don't know. Anyway, is we'll it, we'll fact check it. Yoshimura. I don't know, but he's done. He's written like everything. They writ Cap- Captain Earth was another one that they did. Lord, mm. you remember that? Anyway, the start of Sailor Stars is a um, fanfic. It's like a hundred percent just a uh, like. <laughs> this is Igarashi coming in and saying, uh, "You had the coolest villain ever in Supers." <laughs> and you 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 botched, you yeah. botched the ending. Yeah, they kind of. So now yeah. here I'm going to come in and I'm going to fix it. Yep, I no? need six <laughs> episodes where where we need to a fill time, uh, but now I have the opportunity to, to make a canon uh, right. fanfic a to canon, come to life. The correct I, ending to this. Yeah, this I scene. can bring back Sailor Saturn. <laughs> I can bring I can, back Sailor can Neptune, get Uranus, and Pluto. All the stuff in the manga that they didn't adapt for some stupid fucking reason because yeah. they wanted to do filler episodes instead that were terrible i can bring in all of that stuff i can yeah. get usagi her eternal transformation which also needs to happen at some point before we start sure, this sure, season sure. you know like and yeah. he gets so much done in this first that and those first six episodes it's just like wild like do you remember the I, I put a picture of it down further but the um episode that's just like it, they have like bottle episodes where they get trapped with a person they don't usually interact yeah, with. That's and like one th- part of the reason. That it's all- <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's great. So great. Yeah, and it's um the the episode with Uranus and and Mercury. Mercury. And yeah. It's like the Total animation opposite. of that episode is terrible, but it's but it's it's like so good the way that they they just make this fun little um, yeah. What the, if Sailor Uranus and Mercury got put together? Fanfic. The episode with Mars and Neptune is legitimately funny. Yeah. And yeah, it's great. It's it's because, wonderful. Because Neptune is the person that Mars thinks she is. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then you put her next to Sailor Neptune and it's like, oh honey, no. We've got a it's couple so years good. left. It's so <laughs> good. It's so great. It's so great. Um so all all of these episodes are good. All, this yes. whole string of episodes at the end, um, beginning of stars are great. Absolutely. It's just a, I, I think was... it's an it, it's a matter of like how do you pick which one? Right, it's it's really one movie. I think it's really it really should be consumed in that way. And I think the two moments that we picked here, the Vanity Fair person picked the um, Sailor Jupiter. There's this moment with the rose earring, what is what snaps Usagi out of her um, thing, which is just the biggest fan service thing ever. It's just like the best symbol. It's so fucking good. Um, And it like gives some it gives some important screen time. We're for Jupiter to shine because she doesn't always yeah. get chances to do that after season yes. one. You know? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. And, it, and yeah. we could easily put like five Sailor Jupiter episodes on this list too. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Anyway, um, and then I picked uh, the very start of the first episode of the arc because I love that scene where Sailor Pluto shows up after not having been seen for you know after a, being a season. dead for yeah. a season and a half. <laughs> she suddenly yeah. comes back. Yeah, and then she and then Professor Tomoe is there nursing the little Hotaru, and yeah. then and then uh, she just yeah. steals the baby. Yeah, and Sailor Pluto's <laughs> like, "I've come. For, it, your destiny's come for you." And it's just like it. One, it's hilarious that yeah. he, she just takes the baby, <laughs> and they 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 raise uh, Hotaru as their own child. That um, you know. Setsuna and, right. and Michiru and, and, and Haruka, and, but also that um, it's like this really sad thing <laughs> that she's just yeah. having this normal baby life, and it's like, oh, hey, no, sorry, you, you're, you you're need like to defend the, the universe, you're the harbinger or the solar system. of death, yeah, and yeah. You now. yeah, yeah, it's the <laughs> grace versus glamour. I'm telling yeah. you, it's the, it's the your destiny has come for you, yeah, it sucks. Uh, my pick for episode six was episode 90 premonition of the apocalypse the mysterious new guardians appear which is the first uh, which is the first episode of sailor moon s yes um this is i i like this episode for several reasons whenever i one of the main one being that whenever i do my sit down every couple years and watch the show from beginning to end in order uh this episode is a turning point like Mm. Like you watch this episode and the show feels different, like immediately. Um, like the drama is so high in this episode, the storyboarding is yeah. great. 
Um, the stakes are ramped up like far immediately. You don't even know what's going on yet, yeah. but the stakes are ramped up so far ahead of everything that has come before that. Um, it's the episode it, where Mars has her premonitions that they're all going to die with like yes. that, that famous sequence yeah. of them turning to stone yes. and then like blowing away. It's that it's got, it's the first episode where somebody's pure heart is stolen, which is kind of a violent. Yeah. It's raw. Yeah. Like, and it's Sailor Mars that it's happening to Right. Yep. So this is also a character that we love and we care about. And we're watching yep. this, this painful kind of horrifying thing happen to her. We don't know what's going on yet. Um, it's just a really good episode. Like the dramatic impact of this episode, especially is, is great. Um, I you get that teaser at the end of Uranus and Neptune in the tree. Yeah. 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 No, I, I like what you said about like, this becomes a different, uh, a different show almost. It, yeah. it feels like a gr growing the beard is the TV tropes term, um, from Star Trek, the next generation. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it really is that moment of, oh man, Sailor Moon could be, they always say Sailor Moon S is darker and more adult, which, yeah. And, and I think that's kind of an oversimplification or, or, you know, yeah. but it, it, it really is totally different or, or it tastes different yeah, in your, the, in your mouth. That's you a know, good way of putting sure. it. Like the tone, yeah. the tone is not quite as light not you don't quite have the same sense that everything's going to be okay um you know yeah yeah, yeah. uh so we i looked it up and actually this was written by junichi sato and directed by ikahara oh my god so ikahara being the series director dream for team yes. yeah there you go and <laughs> Yeah. seriously yeah like it's like <laughs> there's one episode of revolutionary girl Lutina that was uh boarded and directed by junichi sato and it's the it's, i'm not gonna spoil revolutionary girl Lutina, but it's like a really crucial episode to revolutionary girl Lutina, and it's just like the best fucking episode for like you can tell me and cut it out <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it's near the end okay near the end. uh and also i don't want to do that much editing okay all right all right all right, all right, all right, all right. So episode five, fifth picks. Yes, fifth picks. We're Why halfway through. Um, so Vanity Fair's fifth pick was uh, episode one ten, Death of Udiel, Uranus and Neptune, the first time. <laughs> I put wait, that in there. Wait, wait, that's what you wrote. Wait, wait, wait. I put I put that in there. <laughs> oh my god, the death so, of Uranus spoilers. and Neptune. The talismans appear. Yes. Which is uh, episode 110. Um, another Ikuhara episode. Yes. Um, Yoji and Akito. Mid-season climax. Mid-season climax. Of, yeah. Yoji okay. and Akito, who went on to be the main writer of Revolutionary Girl Utena, and go. is, in my opinion, another example of someone who doesn't get credit for, yeah, totally. for how good the things he works on actually end up being. Yeah. Um, he wrote this episode. This this episode is just the fingerprints of these two men are all over this episode. You can see the, the backbone, the, the skeleton of Utena coming to life as you watch this. Yeah, it because really does feel like that. With so all the, yeah, it's like the setting, drama. right? Yeah. Like the, the, the background of this, like, I don't know, they're in a church or they're something. They're in like, like a church. On, and the, it's the, on a cliff. They're in a church. They're in a church, but their background is really just black. And you just see the stained yeah. windows, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're right. You're right. And it has trap that, doors and yeah. I don't know, yeah. It has yeah. that sequence where, where after they realize what's happening, that they have the talismans and they've been risking yes. they've been basically willing to kill people they haven't actually killed anyone thanks to sailor moon but yeah. they've been basically uh putting people in the position that they will be dead if sailor moon doesn't come around this whole time right right and, but they're they have the things that they've been looking for yes so you they're, kind they're of, willing to sacrifice others but it turns out they need to sacrifice yeah. themselves yeah and they do it they do it they're right? so raw oh man i <laughs> which, love it which which like gives these characters credibility first of yeah. all like yeah. going forward like you 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 got to respect them for that for being willing to do that after everything else that they were doing yes but also it's just a it's just such a dramatic emotional episode it yeah. doesn't have that redemption part that we we also love but it kind of does doesn't it because of right. what we were just yeah. talking about you know um yeah, but totally. in more of a bittersweet 
Uh, yes, in that way, of, it feels more revolutionary. Girl, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or exactly. Penguin Drum, absolutely. Yeah. So totally. really good. Um, spoilers. I may want to talk more about this later it's, in the list. Sure, sure. So. It's also it's also <laughs> like legitimately funny when yeah. Udil dies. Uh, <laughs> I just oh, remember that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that too is so yeah. Utana. Just yes, the absurdity, yes, yes. the absurd level, and the way the dialogue is written is just ridiculous. It's, it's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I got no complaints about this one. Um, I will say that one of the things I took off was uh, both times Uranus and Neptune die. I, I kind of cheated on my list. I was like, ah, there's too much Uranus and Neptune. I got to take that off. And <laughs> so this was one of them. I love this. Yeah. They, I, they I love know. when they're dying. I love when they're yeah. dying. Yeah. You know, that sounds uh, that's, bad. But that's like, when <laughs> they're, they're at their best. That's when they shine yeah. their, their brightest. And, and we love yeah. them the most is when they're yeah. going to fucking die. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, man. My episode five was speaking of fucking dying yeah naru's tears nephrite dies for love episode 24 um the finale for like the nephrite sub arc that mm-hmm. technically speaking is filler uh right because it has yeah. nothing to do with like well okay with, like, all, all right the Tec- overall plot of the show but i say so- that only technically only okay technically. okay 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 because it large makes asterisk. itself it makes itself not be filler by being so good. Like, yes. like you have to watch them yes. because they're great. Yes, yes. Um, this is the culmination of like maybe a, a it's 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 like he Nephrite's in the show for like maybe eight to ten episodes, maybe, mm-hmm. and like maybe four of those are about him and Naru, right? Yep. So, but they're not necessarily in succession. Like she meets him earlier, right? And then it yeah. Comes down farther down the line, they start it's, to have a thing. It's really the last two, I guess. Yeah. And um, this oh, this episode is so good. Yeah. Um, in the kind of the same way that the first episode is, because this this episode does the whole Sailor Moon crying, the whole Iku, Ikuko Ito doing <laughs> yeah. amazing crying drawings about an right, incredibly right. sad moment. That is this episode. Like this is the first time they do that. In the whole series, yep. you know, yep. um, yeah, it's, Naru's it's, it's, fall in love with this horrible guy, even after she knows I, she's he's a bad guy. Yes, he can't yes. let go of her feelings. And then Usagi tries to talk her out of it. Yeah, and it's like, oh man! And you don't you don't know who's right. You don't know if they should be, you know, yeah. chiding Naru for having this childish, foolish love with this e- very clearly evil person, right? Uh, but then it starts to get to Nephrite too. Like he says, yes! like, like it's, yeah. it's a trope, like, but it's a trope that I love. Okay? Yes, love <laughs> redeems. He yes. starts wondering, like, why does she like me? I'm like clearly <laughs> manipulating her. What? <laughs> <laughs> And then there's this 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 brilliant scene, and I actually use this in my Sato video because yes, this is a Sato episode. Everybody yeah, drink another one. Um, that Nephrite walks down the stairs to to deal with um Jedi's uh not Jedi's um Zoicide's minions. Um, and it's like from Nephrite's point of view, and I talk about like the focalization of this and how it it, it puts you in Naru's point of view in the in the start of the episode, right. and then it puts you in Nephrite's point of view when Nephrite turns the corner and yes. then Nephrite becomes a, a good guy and saves Naru, and it's like oh man the climax of this scene where it's like it's it's total it's total over the top drama of just like the most oh insane pain as he gets impaled and yeah um, there's like these seizure inducing flashes and she tries to pull the stakes out with her hands and it's like it's just like the stakes are like electrocuting her and she's yes. getting like his green alien blood on her hands yes. it's so like it's so yes. much it, but it works. And oh, it's it, it, so good. It works because Naru is a, a lovesick 14-year-old girl. You know? Yes. And, and it, it, is it Im- makes you feel the, what she's feeling. So that – it absolutely. Yeah. It does that. Um, but the feeling that she's feeling and that giving legitimacy to the power of love to triumph and change and, and make the evil, like redeem the evil – um, this is the first time that the show does that. And I also yeah. maintain that this is the first time that a magical girl show does that. And this ah. kind of, this See, I kind don't of, know enough about the history of magical girls to really debate. I, I asked some people, like I haven't seen every magical yeah. girl before Sailor Moon, right? Um, but I've asked some people, I've directly asked them, I believe the magical girl genre starts in this episode. 
and or at least the modern magical girl genre. Yeah. And and what I take away from the modern magical girl genre, it's all in this episode. And I I've asked people to like, it, am I off base on that? Could you you have who have seen all these old shows? Could you really right. say something about Melmo or Creamy Mommy or whatever to right. contradict that? And no, and everybody said no. That's that sounds right if that's what you're going for. So yeah, I I maintain it. Yeah, it's just it's just super super duper sad. It's it's the show's emotional writing on display. It's the sympathetic villains that are that'll be a, a mainstay for the whole rest of the season, the whole rest of the series. Um, it's I think, just I think, so good. I think it's also like a turning a turning of the corner because before this yeah. episode, it's like Jedi gets run over by a fucking plane, and you're <laughs> yes. just like, all right, Jedi great. is just a guy who gets frozen. <laughs> yeah, it's like not. I don't know. It's kind of memeable. It's like Sailor Moon has some good episodes in before this, but uh, in this point, it really becomes what we would know as Sailor Moon. As Sailor Moon, yeah, I would agree with that for sure. Totally. All right. What was my pick for episode five? Oh, this let's one keep it. Was <laughs> almost you, on my list. Did you? Okay, you remember this one? Yeah. Because you said the Mitako episodes, and I, I totally, totally understand. Um, if you prefer the um previous Mitako episode, I would, I, I could see that argument. There's also a good Stars episode. There's also plenty of Mitako moments that yeah. are great. Um, this one's my favorite. It's episode one oh nine. This is from Sailor Moon S, and it is when Minako wants to have her heart crystal stolen. Yes. <laughs> and she does everything to try to make it happen. Like, she's like, am I not a good enough person? Everybody else has their heart crystal stolen. It Why starts can't to I legitimately bother her. Yeah. She has not been attacked yet by the monsters. <laughs> and there's all these shots, too, of like her, her clearly being bothered by it when all the yeah. girls are talking about how, how dangerous it was or how terrible or they, it was. They're like, oh, it was so pain. Like, I forget yeah. what happens. Doesn't like Sailor Mars or somebody like leave? Uh, like abruptly and somebody's like oh give her give her a break because you yeah know, she she was just through a lot or maybe it was sailor moon i forget who it was yeah and I, I, and it's like yeah she just had her heart stolen and they all start talking about how painful it was and what yeah, a horrible exactly. experience yeah, it was yeah yeah yeah, and yeah. Goes in there like hold on i can't like relate zooms to this. in on her and <laughs> just, just stops. <laughs> and then she tries like giving blood she tries donating things yeah. and um <laughs> And then she she uh, eventually gets uh, like even to stay on the Minako thing. It's like she eventually gets it stolen, and then instead of just slumping over, she's like starts oh, running away with it. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so funny. And then it's like, and then Minako without a heart is kind of like Minako without like a conscience. So now she now she's like trying to kiss people. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> crazy. <laughs> It's great. Um, it also has some hilarious moments. There's that one scene of um, uh, when she says, I didn't get my heart crystal stolen. And she's playing the crane game. And Usagi's like, you shouldn't want your heart crystal stolen. She shakes her against the crane game. And yeah. then she wins all the prizes from yeah. the crane game. Like comedy <laughs> like that. And then there's also, um, this is also a plot relevant episode. Yeah, this when... is the episode where they Uranus and Neptune's identities get revealed. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And there's this like brilliant fucking scene like it's the best directing in the world where, where what is uh she says something about pure hearts or something minako gives them the prizes from the crane game machine and she says isn't that something a pre pure hearted person would do and they're like pure hearts and they're like what 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 and back and forth and it's like really funny um and then even later on, that joke comes back as a kicker joke. Yeah. When when uh, Neptune or uh, Michiru throws the prize game machine against the monster of the day to get their attention. Yeah. Oh, fuck. It's a, so a good. A great episode. Who did it, this one? This, uh, another Sato episode. This is a Sato episode. That's yeah. what I'm telling you. This, I actually, brag moment, this is another one of the cells that I have. I yes! have Minako giving blood. Uh, yes. This is the cell And you'll Minico. put a picture of it here. I'm sure. Sure, I'm sure. Uh, yes. Um, the other thing I want to say is that the comedy of this episode. There's one more joke I have to point out. Yes. It interrupts the. There all throughout uh, Sailor Moon S. There is the uh, Haruka and Michiru leaving with the rose petals and the um, 
the, yes. the like yes. music i forget the yes, music trill <laughs> and then they interrupt it in this episode like Minako interrupts <laughs> them leaving in the rose petal thing and it's like my it, it may be my single favorite joke in the in the well there's a lot of good jokes in sailor moon but that like, that kind of um self-referential yes meta yeah. humor yeah is very you know he, ikuhara did not direct this episode but yeah. again this man's fingerprints all, yeah, 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 are yeah. all over everything you yes know? that's an equally yeah. joke yeah i get yeah. you yeah <laughs> <laughs> which we'll talk about in more episodes in here yeah but. uh anyway I, I i could talk about that episode this may be god i don't know yeah i don't know i do i don't know okay never mind never mind let's keep moving yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay episode four from the vanity fair list this they picked episode 34 this is when Tuxedo Mask and Sailor Moon's identities are revealed to each other. This is them in the elevator. This is them going up. And then it's revealed that the Moon Princess is Usagi. Yes. What are um, you, you going to say about this one? Ano- this one is one of their... I don't agree with this pick, but it's one of their more understandable yeah. picks I don't agree with. Because this yeah. is a good episode, you know? Yes, and it yes. probably is one that people remember really well is it in the top 10 you know when i was 12 and i was watching the dub of this episode i probably would have said that because this episode was fucking fire yeah. for for yeah. kids watching the show sure you know because because you know if you're a younger somebody in the audience who is younger you don't necessarily see that usagi is the actually the moon princess yeah you know? <laughs> yep, yep you don't know how this this confrontation is going to play out um you know yep. it, it kind of the whole uh showdown because this is also them uh confronting uh Zoysite and kunzite with the yes. they're trying to do the rainbow crystal trade yep that's what happens yep. in this episode so it is an episode i think that actually is definitely top 10 for the show's target audience <laughs> but y- you've put it in a very good way yeah yes yeah. that's how i feel as well that i right. i it is this, a great episode. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not. Uh, yeah, for 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 being a plot episode, I think the plot episodes in general are, for me, they have to have a really big emotional kicker. Um, but you are putting it in a context that makes it uh, more digestible or more relatable or more yeah. understandable to me. That yeah, that that is, is how I would consume it. This is a pretty emotional episode. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. if you legitimately don't see what's about to happen, yeah. And and we should try to we should remember that Sailor Moon is family friendly entertainment, right? Right. Like, right. like the jokes are for the adults, and the story is right. for the kids watching. You know. And right. I think if you're in that audience of young people watching this when you were a kid, this is like actually kind of a shocking revelation that you didn't. Right. See coming, and it and it also know? relies a lot on the the um the ambiguity on how. Uh, Mamoru is going to receive Usagi being Sailor Moon and right. how Usagi... Because this is also that. where they find out each other's yeah. identities in this episode. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's like a large part of the, the I don't know, The tension. drama of the show. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, I, have, I have a good friend that I went to college with whose seven-year-old son recently watched Sailor Moon for the first time. Oh, and, yeah. And um, he was deeply into it. Like, like you can sit a first grader down now in 2022 yeah. and have them watch Sailor Moon and they will love it because it's, yeah. still, it's still good. Yeah. And he, I, I'm, I, I don't think he was upset about this episode specifically, but I'm sure he was because uh, my friend sent me a DM on Twitter and he said, we're at the episode where Mercury might be going away to Germany. Yeah, he might quit being a, a sailor scout. Is what his his words. Um, and my son is so upset that she's that she's leaving. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. You know, like when you're a kid, that's how you are watching the show. You know, absolutely. You don't absolutely. know what's going to happen. So yeah, this is this is a, a decent thing. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And we are we are removed from that perspective. So it's good that you could bring that up. I would yeah. also like to say that uh, now I realize that none of the Amy episodes ever made this list at all. Uh, 
Um, which is really a bummer because I like that one where she swims against Neptune. In S. yeah, that's a good one. There's that's another one ones. where it's like sh- they they would be in like the top fifty. Yeah, yeah, you know? absolutely, They're totally, all good. totally. Yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. All right. Um, meanwhile, my episode four is back to what we were talking about uh, a few episodes ago with uh, the season one finale. And like, do you do, do you pick the second to last episode or the last episode? And for me, I did remember, right. I did pick the second to last episode where they all die. Yep. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know how much we need to say about it, but yep. it's, it's iconic. Um, it's one of the reasons the show took off. Like, uh, like you could probably pick out a few episodes in season one, which are like the reasons why the show took off. Yep. Um, Animated by Ikuko Ito, yep. uh, Sato just ep. totally Sato episode, totally heartbreaking. Um, these characters that have been invincible the entire show die one by one in quick succession. Yep, yep. And the the Usagi heartbreaking nature of it. The entire yeah. time. <laughs> you know what my favorite scene from this episode is? My favorite scene from this episode is after the first three have died. Like, say so this Jupiter, uh, Mercury, and then Venus have all died. Right, and then. As Sailor Mars is taking Sailor Moon by the head and leading her over the thing, and, just, and then uh, Usagi's Sailor Moon's like, having like a Shinji Ikari moment. Oh yeah, she's, she's like, like let's leave now. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot deal with this. This is no. Yeah. We are. We need to leave. Um, and I would let all their deaths be in vain if I didn't have to lose you, right, uh, Ray. And and it's just like it's the raw, oh, it's so emotionally it's raw. So sad. Uh, yes. And, and, and Mars knows what is about to happen. Oh, totally. And she's like, I'm definitely yeah. not going to die. You know, <laughs> you know, yeah. It's, and, and, oh, and then her, uh, we have a picture here of her, her, um, lying in the crystals after her, you know, final fire soul. Yeah. And man, that's the moment in the episode, dude. Like that's. Cause they don't just die. They're like fucked up afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Like, they're all beat up. <laughs> they're broken. You know? yeah. yeah. But they're still like totally beautiful. Yeah, like, of course. Is the Ikuko Ito thing. It's Iku- like they're just, exactly. They're just gorgeous. It's yeah. Like, oh, oh my god. Um. Anyway, so this is not the last time this episode appears on this no. list. Spoilers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going. Just continue. Because you had two number fours. This this was um, your Usagi moment of counting the this, four twice. <laughs> I don't know how this happened. Go ahead, um, though. I might have been like miscounting and then got excited when I, I remembered an episode and then threw it in there like oh I gotta include that one top 11 I, episodes I don't there know go, how this happened no, it's my beautiful. other episode 4 but is, I would have put this one on my list too like this yeah, is great yeah. is episode 198 which is the dying stars Uranus and Neptune's last stand which is the other Uranus <laughs> yeah, and Neptune yeah, death episode at the yeah. end of Sailor Stars <laughs> like it's it's kind of like the same too like it's kind of like but is they, it? Is they it, go down in a self-sacrificial maneuver of their own design to like. But to, it's like different enough that it's like. Yes. Oh, it know. still hits totally yeah. emotionally. I'm not saying yeah. it's like attenuated by the fact that they're doing it again. In fact, yeah. no, it's all the more serious because you know that they they like die together in the of their own volition, doing what they believe is right. And this is final, by the way. This is like because when you're watching the episode in Supers and and Sailor Moon S. Um, you know, it, what's shocking, I think, is the revelation that they've had the talismans and what they're willing to do. Yeah. Um, but don't you kind of know in the back of your head, like, oh, the, yeah, Solomon's going to save them. You know, yeah. that's not going on in this episode. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. We've just watched them murder their friends and they yes. don't come back. Yeah. The the betrayal okay. thing. That's so yeah. good, man. Yeah. That's so good. We've just watched them murder pluto and saturn yes saturn and pluto yep. and, and and they don't come back they're as dead as everyone else that has died up to this point you know yeah and it's kind of it's actually a little bit convincing because like you said like they are ride or die for each other so at first when they're when they do this they're like oh yeah sure galaxia you mean uh you mean you're not going to kill us when we get to continue to be in love with each other for the rest of our lives forever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you sure. don't know that their deception or right. you don't know where their loyalties lie yeah. in this moment. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. sure. We'll join you then. So then they, they, they basically sell their souls to the devil essentially. Yeah. yeah. And, and then it turns back around where, Oh no, 
they're they actually, they actually, they are so on the same level with each other that they didn't need, even need to discuss yes. this. Yes. They did it, you know? Yes. Oh, it's so fucking <laughs> it's good. It's so good. Oh, I love them. I love they them. Were, they, they, were, they were thinking the same ruse at the same time and knew to just go for it because they were on the same page, you know? And to, to that end, too, the, um, when they're dying and they're fading away, the, the whole thing of like, uh, uh, Neptune says, "I want to. I want to hold your hand." And yeah. there's like these long protracted shots of of. Uh, it's very drawn uh, out, yeah. just for maximum emotional. Oh, it's so it's so raw. <laughs> Um, I will say too that I love how it connects back into the thing of like Sailor Galaxia took her own star seed out, and it's like right. plot relevant that Galaxia yeah. doesn't have a star seed. Right, right, right. Oh man, I love that too. Also, so, uh, that's another very, very good one. Yeah. Also, take yeah. a shot. Sato episode. Sato episode Bam. again. Bam. Yeah. All right. What am I? Oh, I'm up. Yeah. Okay. So I actually, after having talked about episode 45 enough, I will put episode 46 forth. Yeah. Because of course, episode 46. It's um, it's the uh, the canonical triumph of emotions over. Um, power. It is uh, Prince and Demian being brainwashed, and then Usagi goes to fight. He's about to kill her. Yep the the sword yeah. going up, and then the coming down, and she brings forth the locket with the the music box, and and she says uh, something to the lines of "Don't you remember we were lovers once in yeah. another lifetime?" And it's like empowering this miracle romance. It's empowering faith and and like love and and that she believes so hard in that. Uh, eternal love that uh it's somehow uh you know impossibly miracle uh, a miracle is formed and reaches out to uh uh to mamaru who do you want to say yeah. uh tuxedo mask to uh prince and demi and right. um, all those identities um and touches him and then that's and then, and then you've got the second part of this episode. And like that's the, just the first part. And of this then episode. you've got the second part <laughs> yeah. where she fights a giga barrel. <laughs> yeah, giga you barrel. Yes, I do. <laughs> it's I know. got the song in the background. Yes, it's yeah. great. It's yeah. so good. It's the, and then, and then I really love the ending of this, this episode too. Like the coda thing yeah. of like, like I, I don't know. I watched this with my my sister a long time ago when she was about ten or eleven, and it was like, why? is there a happy ending at the end of this? Or why is there that coda where everybody's revived, but they don't remember anything, you know? And I, I guess there's one answer of like, well, you have to continue the series. Like right. they knew they were going to do another season. Mm -hmm. um, but then too, that, that like miracles happen, you know? That, yeah. I would, I would say that it's part of like, it, it's part of the show's kind of thesis of, you know, before even before Evangelion did it and did yes. it in Gundam shows of these are children and this would be terrible, a terrible experience for them to go through. Yeah. And the happiest ending that they could possibly have is to just go back to being normal. Yep. And then not yep. have to do this stuff anymore. You know? Yes. And that is brought up into another episode that we should have on honorable mentions, but that, that episode where Luna gives uh, Usagi back her memories. Yeah. Oh, that's another man. good one. That's yeah. a good episode. For for uh, the same reasons, you know, because it's it's sad. Yeah, grace like, versus glamour. The yeah. the destiny of being a sailor soldier is not exactly. a happy thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also like this episode. That's a good one. I just I mean, I everybody, have distinct, everybody likes this episode. I have distinct memories of watching episode forty six for the first time when I was like twelve yeah. and watching it on tsunami. Yes. Um, yes. I remember watching <laughs> yes. this episode, and I, I remember do. that yes. it made me cry. Yes, I, I yes. remember. Yeah, I think it always makes me. I don't think I've watched this episode like both these two episodes in tandem. You know, like honestly, sat down and watched them where they happened, made me cry. Yeah, it's just it's meant to make you cry. So great. Uh, also, uh, take a shot, Ikuni episode. Oh, <laughs> what are we at now? How many yeah, episodes say, have not been, that's been what directed I, by them? Honestly, I was going through this list and I was like, dang. <laughs> dang, <laughs> dang. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, Vanity Fair's episode three is episode 181, which is 84. titled 184. Oh, I'm sorry, 184. Okay. A night alone together, Usagi in danger. Um, this is my other favorite episode in Sailor Stars. Yes, you know this episode if you've seen Sailor this Stars. This is this is the one where they have they're at Usagi's house. 
and uh, they you know, fight the monster in every- Usagi's house. <laughs> yes, and everybody's wings, there too. Her wings knock over stuff <laughs> on shelves. Yeah, it's the best joke. It's the best joke. <laughs> and she throws a pizza like her tiara at the monster. <laughs> yes. That's this episode. <laughs> oh, there's also like like the Sailor Starlights are all there, right? There's yeah. all these like meme moments of all the girls trying to get with the Starlights and like getting in as cramped a position as possible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is oh, a good man. one this is this is another one that's like yeah top 50 or top 30 oh totally something. totally yeah. totally i, I have no problem 10, with this yeah. yes i i have no problem with this being on a top 10 list like honestly yeah. this this episode's great and if you've seen sailor stars you absolutely know this episode you remember this one this i coming, guarantee coming. if yeah. you if you haven't if you can't remember this episode, you need to watch it again because it's been too long for you. <laughs> and you're this and Neptune show up. Yes. <laughs> like everybody just shows up in Zagi's house. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Um, so these top three are episodes I am super, super passionate about. Go for so it. So I'm glad that we're finally here to the top yes. to the top three. My number three is episode eleven episode eleven, Usagi versus Ray, Nightmare in Dreamland. Um, the episodes I put above this one are almost like out of obligation. Right. If I had to tell you what my favorite episode of the entire 90s anime is, it might be this episode. Oh, wow. Your heart says this one. Um, this is the episode super early in season one. Yes. Um, where it's just... Uh, Usagi, Rei, and Ami, like probably my favorite era in the whole show, honestly, is is like those that early twenty episodes. Okay. Um, right. And this is the one where they basically go to Nara Dreamland, um, which is which was a real life uh, theme park at the time. Oh, really? I didn't know. Yeah. That. And um, they're at they, this is the episode where they go to a theme park, and the the monster of the day is like an animatronic girl. <laughs> yeah, the creepy the puppet park. doll thing. Or, um, yeah. And she's got like a beautiful princess form. And then when yes. she turns into a monster, it turns into like an evil Snow White witch <laughs> form. <Yeah. laughs> and um, this is another one of those episodes where it's like, this is Sailor Moon distilled yes. down yes. into 23 minutes. You know? Yes. You could and, show this uh, independently yeah. to somebody else, uh, yes. and you'd you'd get the dynamics between it's uh, features Usagi and Ray a lot. Um, it's got all that comedy. It's got all that drama. So much comedy. Yeah. It's got good Mamoru moments before they decided to <laughs> not make Mamoru a real character anymore. Yeah. Yes, it does. He's riding on the. Train. He's riding the little train, and they call him out. They're like, "Aren't you too old to be on this train?" And he's <laughs> he gets upset that they're calling him out yeah. on it. Yeah, let man, the man Mamaru enjoy his a, train yeah i was about to say when mamaru gets to be a good character he's a good character yeah he's great um another ikuhara episode yes um it has Shivered. good ami saves the day but it's yeah, also yeah, got yeah. like this is also kind of like the beginning of rei and usagi's relationship is in this yes episode, you know yep, yep. there's um, a reason that they're... is that is a pairing yep yeah and this episode starts it Totally. Yes, because they're kind of at each other's throat the whole, throats the whole episode, but then they kind of pull it together. They get they both get duped by the same monster, so Ray kind of gets knocked down a peg a little bit. Yep. Um, it's just a really good episode. So iconic. The aesthetic of this episode is like plastered all over aesthetic accounts on Tumblr <laughs> yeah. and Twitter. Just <laughs> so good. I could watch this episode over and over and over again. Um, totally. Probably most people would not rank it as highly as I ranked it, but I, I honestly think it belongs up there. Right. This is a little yeah. spicy pick, all things considered. Yeah. Like in yeah. the grand narrative of what uh, yes. the community would think would be the best Sailor Moon episodes, I think yes. a, a lot of ones would outrank it. But I, I have, I have no argument against this episode being a, like a third best Sailor Moon episode. Um, I, I really think what you said about it encapsulating the entire show in microcosm is, is yeah, straight on. Yeah, yep. a lot of my favorite non-story episodes are like that. Um, yeah, yeah. When when you get a filler episode that doesn't feel like Sailor Moon, that's probably an episode that's going to rank pretty pretty low. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, we should also mention too that uh, the out of the quotes I've seen for um, 
Ikuni is that he's he's a big race stand, right? Like that's that's yes, long been that's confirmed. His whole thing. Um, and then also he's like mad that Tuxedo Mask were, and and Mamoru was used in the way that he was in yeah. in uh, Takeuchi's kind of vision of Sailor Moon. So right. yeah, both of those things coming to bear in this episode. Um, not I don't think it's coincidence that it makes it a good episode. Yes. Okay. Uh, what was my pick for three? Oh yeah. My pick for three, spoilers, yes, episode 45. <laughs> We're here again. <laughs> that is it, yep. Uh, the Inner Soldiers die once again. And there's a reason it came up on all three of our lists. Um, a, again, I, I rank it very much highly um, simply because of just how I think this empowers the power of friendship. Yeah. Uh, the, the specifically, I've put a picture of the uh, the kind of the ghosts <laughs> at the end of the yeah. episode where Usagi's crying on her on her knee, or you know, yeah. doubled over crying, and then there's all the like, hurry up, she you still got her friends. Yeah. 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 And the 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 ghostly hands coming back at the epi- end of episode forty six is you yeah. Know, order. That's yeah. Whew. Anyway, I you know. Do you I, have anything more to add? I think this would be in contrast to your episode. Like if you pulled every Sailor Moon fan yeah. who has seen all 200 episodes and you said, which is the best Sailor Moon episode? This may be the number one pick. This one would probably know. get said most frequently. Like, yeah, is it this would be like actually, is this close as we can get to an objectively best episode of the um, movie? I, again, I think that you, something like your pick where it's more representative of the show uh-huh. in whole is probably a better idea for like if we were going to give one episode that is Sailor Moon. Um, but like if you would say what is the best episode that Sailor Moon has to offer as a, just an episode of a show or a dramatic sh- show, then right. yeah, this this one would probably be the best that Sailor Moon gets. Yeah, it, it's definitely up there. It's probably a lot of people's favorite episode. Um, Which is crazy because yeah. <laughs> it's just torture. It's so miserable. Like, you know what I also like about this? <laughs> this is something that nobody brings up. Everybody brings up. Everybody dies. Yeah, and then like yeah, they 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 how they die is is super cool and all the you know the, the art. Um, the beginning when Usagi is fooled by the uh, the trick that they they yeah. bring out. <laughs> they bring out here's tuxedo mask. Come get him, Sailor Moon, and she runs at him, and they all stop her, and then they do it again, and she runs at him again, again. And yeah. I'm like, that is it, man. That is that is something so primal about how you have to operate as a magical girl, and like uh, how how you can never stop believing. You can never, yeah. y- you know, you have to be irrationally um foolish to believe right. in things like that and, and then on the other hand you have to have friends that <laughs> will stop you that from will kidding. stop you from making yeah. bad decisions yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i love it love it it's good all right oh we've got another duplicate here episode two on vanity fair is the second best sailor moon episode of all time according to vanity fair is the 200th episode of sailor moon yes again Igarashi episode again ending the series uh again the triumph of uh compassion and love over power and and might it's got it's got that super fucking sweet sailor chaos form that sailor galaxia has i don't oh, think that's yeah. actually what it's called but that's what the fans call it right um, the uh yeah. the dark crystals and everything in her hair yeah um oh, it's like the the it's not just the ending to the series, but it's the the fi- the finale to like that entire plot point. Yeah, because I, I lo- don't know if it's in this episode that you find out about it, but in the one before, but you get Galaxia's backstory about how yes. she used to be. That, that, a that's where Moon I was going to say. That's yeah. where I was going to say. Yeah, right. yeah, and and how how she is repeatedly portrayed as the most powerful sailor soldier of all time. Like, right. she is the strongest sailor soldier, right? Bar, bar and. None. and it kind of fits in with the, a lot of what's all, other stuff that's going on in the show where like her entire backstory in the, in the nineties anime, this is not applicable to the manga, but in the nineties anime is like, I was this savior kind of person who, who did believe like what we we're just talking about, yeah. like unfailingly until I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. Like, like yeah. She, got, she just did it too much and she was by herself Yep. And she took on yep. all this all this under her shoulders. And that is what actually the weight of the world. Yeah. You know? 
Oh man, I um, love it. I love that. I love that aspect. And so and, much. and Usagi in this last episode, you know, extends that olive branch. Yep. And it's the that, you know, that belief in redemption and how um, you know, the other people around you can be there for you yep. to to deal with the world. And and this is why I say I know I know that you have a long backstory of talking about Madoka Magica, but yes. I see so much of uh what Madoka Magica is talking about in this episode and in the story of Galaxia and, and how Sailor Moon reaches out to. Yeah. yeah. Um, I really like the ending to the original Madoka anime. Yeah. Uh, but we probably yeah, you are not alone. That. We probably yeah. shouldn't get into yeah. that because I'll go on and on and on about it. Oh, man. Um. I, I, we have to do, you know, what we have to do is we have to do a big thing. I know you ended the Madoka Magic cast, but we do have to do a big thing for the for when the movie comes out on the next Oh, movie. sure. Yeah. Like, I'll, do, I'll do a panel. I'll get a bunch of people in here. I, yeah. I, you know, I've talked to a lot of people over the years. We should have a whole, a whole rundown. God, I hope it's good. I hope it, I hope it, I hope it's at least decent. Yes, me too. You know? I don't yeah. think it's going to be. Okay. Anyway. There's neither here nor there. Would you like to talk about your pick for the second yes. best episode of My Sailor? pick for number two, unlike the last episode, which, you know, maybe has more to do with my personal tastes. Yes. I legitimately believe, and I will die on this hill, that this episode is belongs in the top ten. Oh, no argument. Um, no argument whatsoever. Yep. This is episode 31, Love and Chased, Luna's Worst Day Ever, also known as the cat episode. Um, <laughs> you know, on, on a more, on a day where I'm feeling, where I might feel a little bit different, maybe this wouldn't be my number two. Maybe it would be my number one. Because right. I, I legitimately think this is a flawless episode of Sailor Moon. There is nothing wrong with it. Yep. Um, it, it. This episode actually won an award. Yes, yes, that's true. We should say this is an Ikuni I, episode. This yeah. is the one that, I don't know, the, the one you mentioned f- first kind of like put him on the map as somebody who can direct this and kind of like, okay, he would... He knows what he's doing here yeah. as a competent director and uh, episode director. But this one, I think, really thrust him into somebody that could run the show. Or, or this, you know. this is another episode where you can see the shadows of Utena. Yeah. Like, the directing like, on this on episode screen. is like, the direction, like so good. The direction in this episode is so good. Uh, this is the episode where like, for the first five minutes of this 23-minute episode, there's no dialogue. Right, right. It's, it's just yeah. it's just Luna having cat shenanigans yeah. with the other <laughs> yeah. neighborhood cats, right? And like that's another thing that that shows up all the time in Ikuni works is like the animal shenanigans. Yes. Yep, yep. Where, um, 100%. but he he takes like these weird, absurdist, almost Looney Tunes situations with animals, and like somehow combines them with like actual emotional stories by the end of the episode's run and it works and it's Absolutely. not like it's not like forced <laughs> like, or like the resolution <laughs> yeah no I, I know what you mean totally yeah. like this the the resolution of this episode is that the Rhett butler who becomes the monster of the day who is the cat who is, it recognizes luna and his uh, his infatuation with luna e- even spite of becoming a monster right and it makes him do the right thing and not yeah, kill yeah. her and her friends yeah and it's like it's almost like the sailor moon r movie also by Kuni yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's like wow how did that how did this meme stuff of the cat running around <laughs> and, and like this cat being a tuxedo mask uh, stand in here for right. luna how do, he like how did the, that he throws the yeah. fish bone instead yeah. of the rose <laughs> How does that actually translate into a serious character moment? Like, it's how does that happen? Crazy! It's crazy. And like this, this is also a great Zoisite episode. Because oh my is, god! This Rat King Zoisite, <laughs> like crawling around in the sewers. It's <laughs> so <the> good. <laughs> it's so good. Like in terms it's of really- sheer, in terms of sheer entertainment value this yes is, this episode is number one for me it is also uh yeah. really good to sailor mars it is yes. a sailor moon another, or sailor yes. mars episode also true another good sailor mars episode yeah yep. um i just love it i i will die on i will die on the hill for this episode um, i don't know how you could argue against it I, yeah I, 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 this is another one where it's like okay maybe 
most people might not put it in right. their top 10, but it's in right. probably everybody's top 30, you know? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Um, and I, I feel like my pick is kind of in the same vein. In, yeah. In that, like, like yeah. You, real ones will know, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how real you are. Um, so my pick for the second best, this is two, right? Yeah. The second yeah. best episode in all of Sailor Moon is the Sailor Moon Supers episode, episode 147, where Makoto dances with Ami and then with Tiger's Eye and then waits for Tiger's Eye in the rain and never, all and night. never comes back, yeah. Yo, this oh. episode. Okay, first of all, you have uh, Makoto in the uh, kind of like definitive uh, rose black dress. And it's yes. like... Iconic. <laughs> like Makoto is 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 portrayed in a, in a lot of ways, right? Like she's got a lot of angles going on. She's got a lot of stuff. She's got the yeah. romance stuff that she pines for. She's got her uh, gardening and her um, like uh, cooking and all that. Uh, lots of angles to her. And then the martial arts and her wanting to be powerful like she was in the um, – the Haruka episode of Sailor Moon right. as, but then she's also got like this, like incredibly vulnerable, like I, I want to be a feminine woman and be That's perceived as beautiful and be loved. And, and it's like, so it's, yeah. And like, you see her in this, in this like way, way far above everybody else in the way that they're dressed in this school dance or this like local dance right. situation. It's just like f insanely gorgeous. So this is the thing in anime. Like I, I think a lot of times they'll be like, Oh, you're, so pretty or something and then the character will be drawn like all the other characters right yeah yeah yeah. and and but this is this is one of those times where it's like i look at what's on screen and i'm like holy shit she's beautiful yeah and like the entire plot of the episode revolves around her being perceived as as gorgeous right. um and she does this and then she's she's also like I don't. I know the official statements will vary, but in my head, she's always been like five eleven or six foot tall, in, in, right. just in my mind. Right. And and then she's at this dance, and nobody wants to dance with her because she's you know way too so you know, tall. Yeah, yeah. Which and is like I'm, a thing that tall women have to do. Oh, with. totally! You like a hundred percent. Yeah, like yeah. So. Um, she's not, she's like pining for this romance and, and somebody to sweep her off her feet at the dance. And then in, in, as she's alone, Ami comes up and dances and with her. Dance. Oh, and I love it's it. the it's best. So good. Like their relationship goes all the way back to season one and all yeah. these great moments in season one. And then you're like, yes, that would happen. And that's like the best thing ever in, in like the way that heals my soul, but also is good for the characters and is a good story for the characters. Yeah. Um, um, this is this yeah. is like like t if we're talking about like perfect episodes that encapsulate a certain thing. This yeah. is this is the Makoto episode. Is this sure, episode. sure. It has sure. basic. It has pretty much every facet of her, like like in play here. You know? Right, right. She she is at her best here. This is. She's not just the the strong one. She's not yes. just the boy crazy one who gets dumped all the time. Right, you know? right. And she's, she's not, not just, just this like, pretty. domestic angle, too. Yeah, of, yeah. Like, I'll teach you how to cook Usagi. And, yeah, there's yeah. All, all of the different sides of her come into yeah. play in this one episode, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and and so the the uh, the other part I like about this episode, of course, there's the tiger's eye, you know, manipulation angle and how willing she is to fall for it. Um, but when she has this, this romance with tiger's eye and the... Like and then he goes off to uh, prey on the other women. Right. Uh, he says something like, "Oh, wait for me, won't you?" Or some just you know one throwaway line. Right. And then the rest of the episode is Mako dwelling on that of like, <laughs> "I wanted this so fucking badly that I am going to sit here until it happens." And the, the, like her stubborn aspect too, like that's yeah, a yeah, large yeah. part of Mako. Though. And and so then this is this is like my favorite, um, my favorite power of friendship moment not even power of friendship but just friendship moment is that in the rain after the dance is all done when it's clear that he's not coming back the other girls don't go up to her and are like makoto you got to come home now like he's yeah. not coming back they no they come with a towel umbrellas and sit there and wait with her right. in the and that's just like I, I can't put into words how how valuable that is as a statement about friendship. Oh my god, what, you're gonna you make know. me cry. Kai. I know, I know. It does make me cry because it's like it's, it's so sad. Yeah, but it's yeah. like it's such like like that's what being a real a friend is sometimes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like I know you're going through some stuff. I don't know what's best for you. 
But yeah. I can sit here next to you. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. I'm not yeah. going to tell your feelings are wrong. They're right. they're not wrong. And I'm going to get through this with you. Yeah, man. That's a good one. I love, love it. that episode. Who directed love that, that one? Uh, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't it Hold wasn't. On. It wasn't Hold anybody I knew. But Yuji you know, Endo. You know, yeah, Endo does a ton of Sailor Moon episodes. Um, also, this I would is like a good to know one who, from him. I would. Yeah, I would like to know who wrote it. Honestly, because like um, that. That's the that's the part where I'm like, damn. Ryota Yamaguchi. Yeah. Is that the guy you were talking about earlier? Did do anything? Who, um... No, that was Uday. Uday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know. You know, I mean, hey, there's there, you know, there, there's there's one story I like to say about that is like sometimes you just make a masterpiece. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, there's like one episode of Arya the Animation that I have a video up on it on my channel, but it's like my favorite episode in all of anime. It's like it's like literally the best thing ever, and it was just an episode done entirely by one person. And that person almost did nothing else in all their anime career. Oh, they no. just came in and dropped the, the best freaking episode and then peaced out. And I, I think about <laughs> that all the time. And I, I'm sorry, I don't have their name, but you can go check my video. And it's like, I I love it. I love it. I love it to death um, that it's just this one thing that fits so well. Like you clearly understood these characters on a level that is astounding. Uh, this yeah. is reminding me, I hate to bring this up because I Go think ahead. that everyone has collectively forgotten about it for good reason. But this is reminding me of the one good episode in the Netflix Cowboy Bebop show. <laughs> I don't know if you watched it or not. Uh, I've, I've purposely tried to forget it, so... Okay, it's the yeah. episode It's the episode where uh, about Faye and her quote-unquote mom. That one oh. episode where they're no, going around it. with hijinks all day. Now it is nowhere near as good as any of the episodes we're talking about. Yeah, but it's I, like it's like the one episode in that show that's like worth watching and actually sure. entertaining. Sure. And it's like who the, whoever wrote that episode or director it just came in, yeah. made one Killed really <laughs> made one good episode of TV, yeah. and then like apparently didn't do anything else in the whole. Show. <laughs> yeah, we're not, yeah, to not influence any of the rest of that uh, <laughs> that series. Um, yeah. Okay, to bring it back to Sailor Moon, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Faye episode in Cowboy Bebop, episode 18, mm -hmm. uh, if you will remember of Hooray Hooray Me, uh, yes. of the anime, do you know who storyboarded that episode? That's, that's also Junichi Sato. <laughs> you can go watch my face. I actually remember. I actually remember that factoid. <laughs> Just to oh, prove that, all, that we're it, dealing with a all, goat here who does not get enough in. of no, his I'm telling enough, you. Uh, I'm telling respect. you. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. All right. Whew, we're almost done. But before we get to our number one episodes of all time, we have a couple of honorable mentions here. Yes. Now, we've already talked about this first one. Yes. Uh, we already talked about it. In my honorable mentions are those first six episodes of Stars that we already talked about. They're great. Uh, pretty much have already said what I, what I wanted to say. Basically, yeah. just that they're all, I feel that you kind of have to take them all together and that they're all good. Yep, and they all make each Generally. other better. <laughs> so yep. it's, that's why that's probably the only reason why they're not in my top ten is because I couldn't honestly pick any one of them sure. to put on. You know, yep. um, I also put a put a picture of that uh, Uranus uh, Mercury episode, and yes. boy, that art on that episode that is, oh. I love it. I love um, it. I forget what is Masahiro Ando. Yeah, Ando is the Ando. name of this animator. He's the guy. You know what? You know, I actually. I actually, I actually like how his episodes look. My I get problem, you. I get my you. problem with them is that he draws it's so off model to the rest right. of the show. Right. Yes. If yes. the whole show 100%. looked like his art, because his his style is very good. The characters have really cute round faces. Yes. Um, yes. they've got like these chunky wrists and ankles. Like yep. the way he draws the characters' bodies is very distinct, and it's not. I actually do like. Yes, it's very How good. How he does it? For, the problem, for, yeah. yeah, the problem is that it like no one told him like, listen, buddy, do you need another copy of the set day? Like, <laughs> you're not trying them right. Nobody came in and made corrections. All they were just yeah. like, ah, I was like, no. Uh, yeah, no. It reminds yeah. me. You know what it reminds me? Of? It reminds me of something like um, Umakoshi and uh, uh, Magical Doremi, uh, yeah. Sato, or like Hard Catch Pretty Cure. It's yeah. much more. 
uh, blobby and 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 yeah, no, it's good in yeah. that way. It's just it, not. It, it distinctly does not look like Takeuchi's style or exactly or Ta- or Tadano's adaptions for the character designs. You know, yes. it, like it doesn't yes. look. <laughs> yeah, it looks right. like a different show. It does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. But then again, the first the first run of Stars is a fanfic anyway. So. Yeah. True. Anyway, uh, you want to share one of your honorable mentions? Do I want to share one of my honorable mentions? Yeah, Let's yeah, see. We'll Where am I? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. So mine, uh, I really like this episode. It's funny. It's an Ikahara uh, episode. It is the Ray episode from Sailor Moon S with her drummer friend. She has a drummer friend that she's meeting with. Yes. And then all the girls are also at the cafe that she's <laughs> she's meeting her at. And there's this like extended hilarious comedy sequence where they <laughs> get the uh, waiter all wrapped up. It's very funny. This it's also is the- where Chibi- Chibiusa comes back. I was going to say, yep. That yeah. is also, it is the first example of pink sugar heart attack. Uh, it's and the comedy great. that comes along with that. It's like it, overall a pretty, like yeah. a really good episode. Yeah, so like, it's not, yeah. It, it, it's again, <laughs> the top 50 episodes. I, it, I just think it's hilarious. Um, in, see, like I have more serious episodes in my honor, honorable mentions, I, I feel. Well, you had more comedic episodes in your main list. That's so true, that, yeah. that works out. I'll, I'll, I'll include... I'll kind of go through both of these at the same time. They're both Sailor Moon R episodes. Um, the first one is episode 59, which is the last episode of the Makai Tree arc, yep. which is also fan fiction. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> created specifically for the uh, yeah, yeah. anime only as um, because the manga yeah. wasn't up, or the, now, the R manga wasn't up yet. If you like Sailor Moon for the way it's stupid and silly, then you probably love the Makai Tree episodes. I was going um, to. I had a diatribe uh, to put together <laughs> about the about the like how El, uh, Alan and Anne are like good additions to Sailor Moon overall. Like they're yeah, I like them. Yes, I, I like yes. them honestly. Um, some of their episodes are not great. Uh, some of the stuff like the plot stuff with them are is very silly. Yes, yes. But as characters, I think they're great. Yes, um, I would one hundred percent. And agree. Uh, you know, I I like. I don't really care for most of the actual episodes themselves, but the the fin- the finale for that little mini arc, I think it is good. I think yeah. it's it, it feels like a Sailor Moon. Totally. Uh, it's got kind of like that that weight to it and that heft to it that a Sailor Moon season finale has, but just like in a more condensed form. Um, 100%. This is also it's also the episode where Mamoru like remembers everything. Yeah, the Moonlight Night stuff. That was the part of that that I never really, (laughs) I never really fought in on Moonlight Night. Sailor Moon R is a rough season for memory. Yeah, Yeah, (laughs) not good. They could, they really. That's for all the things that Sailor Moon figured out. Going with him, yeah, yeah. For all the better, but instead they just made him worse. Exactly. They never really figured out where he should be or what what he should. There's one good scene in Sailor Moon R for Mamoru. Do you know what it is? It's uh, it's when he's got the 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 tuxedo mask doll, and he's talking to Chibiusa, and he's like, yeah. "Just do a tuxedo mask. What's going on?" Which That's is good. from the manga. Yes, yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the uh, the other Sailor Munari episode that I I would kind of pair with this is episode sixty eight, which is Protect Chibiusa, Clash of the Ten Warriors. Yeah, um, this one's good. This one is good, but it, I also feel like it's like purely because of how memorable it is. Um, I remember this episode being so much more epic than it actually is if you sit yeah. down and watch it. Yeah. This is the one where the the all the inners face off with the uh, the sisters. Yeah, it, and there's like that rock and song in the background, yeah. and like in my head, I remember the animation being really like, <laughs> so cool. It's an action episode, actually, right? Yeah, it is. It's an action yeah. episode, but if you actually sit and watch it, there's like maybe sixty seconds of action. Yeah, um, <laughs> that, totally. That moment is so good and so memorable that that's what you remember and when i think back on my favorite episodes that that stuff is so strong that this episode comes up you know yes Um, i do i I do i really do and i think the the emotional drama between uh or like chibiu says learning to trust the sailor soldiers is the big uh emotional through line and it totally comes through yeah um, I would also like to say two drinks. Episode fifty nine is by Sato. Episode sixty eight is Ikuni. It's by Ikuni, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's another one of yours? 
of okay. your uh, like honorable mentions. Oh, let's stay in Sailor Moon R because you okay. know what? I like <laughs> Sailor Moon R. I happen to like the Spectre Sisters. And I happen to like <laughs> Saphir. And uh, there's one episode, episode 86 of Sailor Moon, um, that is Pets and Sapphire and the uh, the whole yeah. thing of like her relationship with Sapphire, which is like not a, a big focus or anything. It's like not what the show is about, but it's here and it's in this uh, in this one scene and how much she cares for him and wants to see him leave the Black Moon clan um, and how like resolute he is in in his brother doing the wrong thing about Prince uh, diamond um, being like corrupted by the wise man. And the, right. the end of this episode is Sapphire going to confront diamond. And um, yeah, it's, Does it's like, well. yeah, no, it doesn't, but it, it's like <laughs> th- the character's emotions are so there. And so, yeah. so um, stated and follow through. And it's like, you really believe that pets would try to save Sapphire. Yeah, and 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 I I just I just love that scene where she's uh, she the, really cares about him. It's yeah. like how do you tell somebody what they're going down a wrong path? How do you tell somebody that you don't want them to? Yeah, it's got that element that the Molly and Naru episodes have. Yeah, you know, it does. Yeah, it, does. Um, it, it, it it's it's also reflective. I thought I have a video on my thing about uh, a place for the universe and reflective writing that she's telling Sapphire that she doesn't want this bad ending for him when sapphire then goes to tell diamond that he doesn't want this bad ending yeah for him. yeah oh. um i will i will also say this one was the other one that it was uh r- directed and storyboarded by konosuke uda who uh, again, is my zombie land saga guy yes so wild uh, wild my, i did not uh, know that before i picked it oh really <laughs> yeah See, i picked two i picked two of his episodes it, like stuff like that just falls into place. Though. It's like, like you. Know, it's like you actually like the qualities that they bring in their episodes. Yeah. Like wild how that just, happens. I'm not just making it up. Like it's, yeah, it's like ninety percent of this list is not Sato and Ikahara just yeah. because they, you know, the, yeah. we did that on purpose. No. Exactly. No, they just happened to write the best one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and my last honorable mention is another Sato episode. There you go. Um, this one is, I think this is a love it or hate it episode. I don't yeah. know how the average person feels about this episode. Um, this is episode 132 from Supers. Uh, the perfect couple Usagi and Mamoru's love. Um, this is the episode where, uh, see, if you if you like Usamamo, this is your shit. <laughs> if you hate Mamoru and you wanted him to be gone after season one, you probably don't like this episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the episode where, um, uh, like with with the Ball family, like like the oh god, yeah, the, the, monsters, the monsters who are just inflatable balls. Uh, yeah. And and is this the one where she gets smothered? She gets she's getting smothered, <laughs> and then Mamoru runs up and tries to save her, and then the Ball smarts smothering Ramaru, and and Usagi catches it, and she's like holding it up and. And, and choking to death while like saving Mamoru from dying, and um, and Mamoru like he had gotten pinned like to the ground with knives because like one of the Amazon trio, yeah, yeah. like pinned him to the ground with knives. It's a weird and he fight. Pulls, yeah. He pulls one out and rips his shirt as he's pulling it out and s- fucking stabs the monster. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so raw, but. Yeah. It's so good. But this this is the episode where like to take a step back, um it like the victim of the day is like this girl that that Mamoru goes to college with who wants to be a police detective. Oh right. Yeah, yeah. this is the one where Usagi thinks that Mamoru is dating the college girl. Well, where Chibi Usa thinks. Oh, okay, okay. okay that okay. that Mamoru is dating the college girl. And when she tries to bring this up with Usagi, Usagi's like what are you saying? That's never. That would never happen. I trust Mamoru completely, yeah. and that is not good enough for for a TV show. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, and it preys on Usagi's like fears and like and insecurities. It's just like, wait, would he really go with another woman? And then she, yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's uh, a. The, but that, the, by the end of the episode, it's like, yeah, they are like their relationship has has evolved to such a degree right. that like. No, Usagi is serious. Like, sh- like she doesn't even think for a second that Mamoru yeah. could be cheating on her with some girl he goes to school with because yeah. she knows he would never do that. Yep. You know, 
Um, and it also has that great scene where Usagi is trying to decide between the pink donkey toy and the <laughs> green elephant toy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just great i just like this one a lot um yeah it's a meme I episode think i, get I you. think it's good i okay. know a lot of people won't think it's good but i would good. say that would be top 100 uh, <laughs> best it's better than it isn't uh but i yeah, 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 I'm yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Uh, this yeah. wouldn't be one that would come up in my mind i like it that's why it's an honorable mention yeah uh what's my last honorable mention here oh oh i've got a good one for you this is uh after the events of the climax of Sailor Moon S, the, there's one episode that probably doesn't need to be there in the larger scheme of things, but I love it. It is episode 126. This is the one where Usagi fights Uranus and Neptune, or Uranus and Neptune, rather, pick a fight with Usagi. And uh, I just love this one for the sole fact that the character writing on, or I, I guess it was Ikahara at that time, would, would say we need to have some resolution to Uranus and Neptune's character arcs, right? Like like Usagi does all the bullshit that she does in the climax of Sailor Moon 125 and, and um, Sailor Moon S. Um, and it's all like miracles and magic stuff, right? But then... It's not Uranus and Neptune are like, would you make sacrifices to protect the world? And Usagi never answered that question. So in the final episode of, well, it's not the final episode. There's one more after this. But after that climax happens, there's, uh, it's like, they still need that answer. They still need Usagi. Will you fight to defend this planet and this, you know, and, and would you sacrifice for it? And Usagi doesn't want to fight. She's like, we're not, we're front, we're not enemies why why are you forcing this on me but then she eventually does she uses the power of the silver crystal and then sailor moon or sailor uranus and neptune have their answer and they bow and say we we you know we will accept you as our princess see i don't know if i just don't remember this episode but i do not remember this episode being good <laughs> See, see, this is the thing. This is the thing. Like, it's only good on like a character, yeah, uh, like uh, motivation level. Otherwise, is, it, it's a writing say, episode. I want to say this might be one that I usually skip. Yeah, um, so probably. I might not have seen it in a really long time. Probably. So it's totally possible that y you are correct, and I've just never given this episode a chance. Um, but I honestly. I kind of consider this episode to be like not very good because it's like very unnecessary. But I've think, never thought of it that way. Yeah, way I think that's the public perception. I think yeah. that is that is the way this episode is looked at. Yeah, unnecessary. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I should try to check it out again because I, I I do want to say that I would probably normally skip this one. Yeah, um, I that's probably the case. Uh, it's I I am a sucker for I'm here for writing and first and well, foremost, so am and I. this is it. So am I. So now I'm like. Do I just, has it just been a long time? Right. I guess you have to be looking at Uranus and Neptune in the right way. And you yeah. have to be, it is kind of overshadowed by everything else that's going on. And like, remember in this, in the climax of Sailor Moon S, they're like bonded. They're like hardcore bondage for most of the climax. They're just yeah. there to yell, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like they're basically uh, out of commission for most of the episodes. Yeah. 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 Which I don't, I don't know. I guess we can get to that. Would you like to progress on to number one? Oh, Yes. So Vanity Fair's number one is episode 125, the episode right before the one we were just talking about, which is the shining shooting star, Saturn and the Messiah. And it's the basically the finale of Sailor Moon S. Um, we have... Uh, uh, we Sagi's have a lot role. of stuff going on on this so one. So much. There's so much yeah. in this episode. Um it's an eco. We, it's an Kiko Ito episode. We should say yes. It is also the episode where the famous meme face is from. I looked it up. <laughs> the 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 crying Sailor Moon that everybody redrew. Yes. That is yes, this yes, episode. The redraw. Yep. It. Yeah. Yep. Um, and the boards are by uh, Sato Jun Janichi Sato. Yes. So. And it has that whole thing at the ending where um, uh, Hutara becomes Saturn, and she's like, okay. I'm going to go kill myself to get rid of the Messiah. See you later. <laughs> and she jumps in. Yes. And it and, all happens off screen. Dude, yeah, I love that yeah. so fucking much. And, and, and Usagi just cannot accept the fact that somebody she cares about has to die. 
in order yes. to save in order to fix the situation. Yes. And um she like takes out her own heart crystal to like make it happen. It's very yeah. dramatic. Yeah, yeah. Everything that had come up to this point, you know. It really is like a, f- a forced miracle. Like I you know. Yeah. It, like, like she she doesn't have the chalice anymore, so she can't turn into Super Sailor Moon anymore. But she's trying so hard. Like yeah. she keeps saying the magic words over and over again. Yes. And it's so it's almost to the point of being like melodrama. Like it's yeah. almost too much. Yeah. But that's just like the the incredible intensity of like where her head is at in that yes. moment. Yeah. Yes. And uh like it it is I don't think I put it at number one, but right. again, probably a lot of people would it would right. list this as a top ten episode. Yeah. 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 I, I I agree with you. I I think it's beautiful, effective, and I really want to say that I like the beginning part of the episode too, which is um Professor Tomoe and his his, you know, reconciliation, redemption, uh, I don't yeah. know what you want to say. Like him his baby face turn. Um, and I like him as a character, honestly. <laughs> I do too. It, brainwashing is always hard or like, you know, corrupted yeah. values or bad guy turning good. Well, it's not even that. He's just like fun during the rest of the season. Too. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know? He's just... Yeah, but then but then him as earnest father that he didn't want uh, Hotaru to die. And that's why yeah. he did it. Yeah. Yeah. It's also very Evangelion, that entire flashback scene. Oh, totally. Oh, totally. Yeah. Like, like very totally. glaringly. Yeah. Uh, well, we should also mention, do you know, this is our, do you ever do that Sailor Moon uh, iceberg thing? Uh, because that's one of the facts that would be on the iceberg is that Uranus and Neptune's transformation sequences are done by none other yeah. than Hideaki Anno, I know. Director of Evangelion. That's amazing. Which is I, wild, I, you know? Yeah. And he, and did, apparently, he did key art on another one of the S episodes too. Yeah. Well, apparently like him and probably with the help of Ikuhara, they had to like fight for Uranus and Neptune's uh, transformations to be like nine seconds instead of like four <sighs> seconds. Oh, like, they really? I didn't know like, that. They wanted <sighs> their transformations to be like as fast as like the stars. Yeah. yeah or the inners. Like, yeah. You know, how, yeah. you know how, well, no, I mean in, in the um, starlights, the starlights, like, you know how their transformations are like in the blink of an eye stage on. Like, yep. Yep. They get done. Short. They zip. Like they wanted, apparently the producers wanted their, they didn't want to pay for it. Like, like the the very, very expensive process of making like that high quality animation. And they had to, can you believe that? I know. That's like the best decision to do. Like, Like, no, they need the extra few seconds. I know. It's like such the right creative decision to give them extended transformation sequences that are just the most gorgeous things in the like top one on animation in Sailor Moon. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh, I. mm. Like, and like, that's everyone's big complaint about like Sailor Moon Crystal. Like, oh, why don't they. I don't like the transformation. It's like it like overshadows like so many other issues that Crystal has. Yeah. Like that's the thing that like the that casual <laughs> fan is upset do, about with Crystal. Do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds <laughs> me of the um uh the a uh, Nanoha fandom when it would be like you would go see the Nanoha movie so you would see the new transformation. Yeah. For Nanoha. It's like that's exactly. the that's what you're here for. Yeah. yeah and it's like 30 <laughs> seconds long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but they they knew back then yes. that that's that, how important that was. Oh yeah, specifically know? to those two characters too. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And like, I guess that leads into my number one, Go which for it. is episode one hundred and ten, which we already talked about way earlier in the list. Um, the Let's death go. of Uranus and Neptune, the talismans appear, which is that that mid season finale of Sailor Moon S. Um, yep. I mean. I, I, the scene at the aquarium. We, oh, man. Yeah, the scene at the aquarium. <laughs> like and they like they rip they, Sailor Moon's. You remember they take her, take yeah. her. Uh, um, this is uh, not just off? the episode. Oh, yeah, this is not just the episode where they, um, where they die, but yeah. like there's this whole plot leading up to that of they think Usagi has the talismans. Yeah, and so leading up to that, yeah. they're struggling with like. 
oh, this Can girl we that Isagi? we care about. Yeah. And they even have differing you know? opinions on it too, right? Yeah, There's that yeah. scene in the pool where, where like, uh, all throughout many episodes, like Michiru is more reserved about the, the, uh, actions that they're doing she's still she's still on board with it but she uh no no thinks... haruka is haruka is is more like oh for usagi specifically well no i think it's haruka or may, am i mixing up I, uh, I could be um I, think, I i think it's haruka that's more like are we doing the right thing i think they both do but i, yeah, I think yeah. there's like some some episodes there's like i distinctly remember them being on a rooftop after the monster of the day thing has been resolved and and then uh haruko is like well we have to keep going and no matter who it is we have to sacrifice them and then there's like this lingering shot on michiru or, or neptune as she just like looks down at the the inner soldiers yeah yeah. Well, and, w- see, then I guess it is both of them because what I'm thinking yeah, of is that classic. The, I don't know what episode for, it's in, but that's classic shot where where Haruka is the one with doubts. And yes, the, and so they both Michiru feel comes it. But they, over and yeah. and takes her hands and she's yes, like, I don't yes. care how how dirty your hands are because I still yes. love you know, So they both feel yeah. it. They both share right, 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 it. But right, then right. Haruka is not is going is not going to express it because of who she is. Where right. yeah, yeah, absolutely yes. And and God. so that's going on in the background that's to this so episode, good. and that's it leads so up to this confrontation. And oh no, 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 it's not uh, Usagi that we might have to kill. It's we're the ones who got to die. So yep. now we got to now we got to put our money where our mouths are. Yeah, you know. And how serious were we ever about that? And it turns out that they they were they meant it, you know, oh. and they were willing to sacrifice themselves too. Oh. And um, it's just so good. Yep. The the way the way that that um I think it's Uranus like takes Udiel's gun and like yeah. presses yeah. it to her own chest. Yeah. Yeah. You, like I hate to be I hate to be an old person, but I feel like you couldn't do that in anime nowadays. Yeah, like, <laughs> sure. Such a such a like a blatant like suicide invoking yeah. kind oh, of Oh, it's very imaging. clear. It's very yeah. clear. Yeah, yeah. Um and it's, it's also this so this good. Romeo and Juliet thing too, right? Like, like right. Mitru does it first, right? Or 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 Haruka does it to Mitru, which is yeah. I don't I don't remember. But um, Mitru goes first, and then and then that's Haruka's thing. Yeah, yeah. That's, ugh. that's ugh. Um, probably the best episode in my opinion. What about you? What is there your? You go. There you what go. What is your personal? Well, I will say, <laughs> not surprising that we've already talked about my episode as yeah. well. My favorite Sailor Moon episode, I think the best Sailor Moon episode, is episode 24. That is the Nephrite Naru episode. Um, the uh, the, um, the emotional heart of the modern magical girl genre, as I like to say. And uh, uh, the the uh, I always remember, you know, a lot of what we've already talked about already. But I always remember Molly from Brooklyn. Yeah. And she's going to get her chocolate parfait. <laughs> And man, that watching that as a kid, I was like that that wrecked me. Uh, yes. Watching it again <laughs> in Japanese wrecked me. I still, you know, writing essays about the genre, I still come back to this moment of just like, damn, that they really did it. They really, they really redeemed a bad guy yeah. with a minor character, and like, it informs everything about how sailor moon acts for the rest of the show yes and it's just like i i can't get over it i can't i can't yeah i don't know how you can how you can like ignore that or say that's like not wild even in any aspect of it that's crazy that it exists that it has created the next 30 years that it, of, the impact like it yeah. it shouldn't be as impactful as right. it is on paper, right? Right. Just you've got even the, as a, you've got the ending yes. episode to what is technically a filler arc. Yeah. yeah. Involving a minor character. <laughs> Who's and a, not that and interesting or not that deep. You know, one dimensional bad guy. Yeah, yeah. But they like they managed to like put something together that's like ends up being one of the most iconic moments in the whole show. Right. right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I I, I don't it's uh I I am consistently impressed with every time I watch Sailor Moon or revisit it on how how possible it is for Sailor Moon to move you emotionally um, or manipulate you emotionally. Um, and I think that a lot of these dramatic moments that we've shared are examples of 
just how it goes about doing that um, and how effective it is at doing it. And the way that it delights you and make you, makes you feel like a 14 year old kid and like. That too. At the like same just, time. Like the, the way it plays with tone and like your expectations depending like within individual episodes. I don't know. I, it's just it's, so good. It's, yeah, it's like a little slice of life. Like life, yeah, is sad. Modern and Toei is though. not nineties Toei. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we can't sh- we can't uh, shit on Toei right now because they okay. just got hacked and now all the One Piece and all the pretty cures are delayed. So, <gasps> are did they really? I didn't. Yeah, know about you that. that. Oh no. yeah, they just got they just got hacked and everything is delayed for a month. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> that's too bad well that sucks i I don't wish them i don't wish ill on them but no absolutely not Uh, but yeah no it's it's wild that sailor moon as a franchise or as a series the original 200 episodes of sailor moon it's wild that it even exists as a thing It, it really really is and it's also wild that it's one of the most popular media franchises in in our modern world yeah um you know there may be uh, more technically successful uh, magical girl shows that have sold more merchandise or have gone on longer. But Sailor Moon is like the internationally recognized magical girl anime series. Yeah. It you is know? the canonical heart of the genre, I would yeah. say. And we, um, we talked about this in our magical girl tier list video. Yeah. Also on the channel. Okay, I um, sorry for the plug. Go back to okay. <laughs> <laughs> waxing poetic about the uh about And it's the... something I brought up frequently on my former podcast, Magic yeah. Magic Cast. Yeah, I... <laughs> All of the episodes which you can still look up and take a listen to right now even though the show is no longer going. <laughs> there you go. Just just search Madoka Magic Cast on your yeah. YouTube. Um, yeah. Kai's Kai was on it. Oh, you were on it to talk about Wonder Egg, though. I was on it to talk about Wonder Egg, yes, which I have a video up yeah. about, uh, more about the ending of Wonder Egg Priority, which yeah. uh, showcases some of the ambiguity that you see in a lot of the Sailor Moon episodes. You can oh. also find in the ending of Wonder Egg Priority. Yeah, we did. We Let's did not go. agree on the on the Let's Wonder Egg. <laughs> but even though I say that, you everyone listening should still go check out that video because Kai's yeah. got interesting everything. To say like, favorite, subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Well, geez, we did it. We got it done. We made some content. Amanda, thank you so much for coming in and sharing uh, your thoughts. I sincerely value your takes on this. And it's it's so wonderful to be able to speak to this about with another fan that, you know, gets it. Thank you for inviting me on. It's always fun. I hadn't had any any recent podcasting stuff to do since mine ended. And uh, it was fun to talk about Sailor Moon again for once. Yay. All right, so we will we will definitely have you back when that Madoka Magica episode oh, or, God, uh, yes. movie airs. I'm we down. Will, Just we and many others will have to talk about it. So. Yeah, right. and if uh, if you want to do the top ten worst episodes of Sailor Moon, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> maybe everybody who's listening who's made it to this far, put your worst episode of Sailor Moon in the comments, or tell us what fav- what your favorites are. That yes, we didn't on Twitter. Talk about. Yeah. yeah on uh or in the comments yeah yeah do we miss i man if there's an episode we missed i would be astonished i'm you know i i'm sure i can go through the list and find ones that i'm like like other filler episodes that i love right like yeah, like other yeah, ones yeah. that i'm yep. like oh this one's amazing i know a something. couple already yep. yeah but, but i think we hit all of the really big ones sure yeah. i think this was comprehensive i think we did a good thing here go us <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 